All right, it is six minutes past 10 GMT. I don't know what time it is with you, um, but uh, we are going to get started. So my name is Alec Nelms. Uh, I work here at Diploma MSC. I'm a digital marketer here at Diploma MSC, but uh, some of you guys, I'm already recognizing some of your names on the attendee list. Um, I do work with the admissions department as well. When you guys get accepted for a course, I'm the one who tends to call you straight afterwards to say congratulations. I get the fun job. Um, of, of welcoming you guys onto the course but you are through to our first digital open day for Diploma MSC which is really exciting. Um, we've never held a digital open day before as you probably guys know or maybe don't know we are an online uh, resource so we, all our courses are offered online. We collaborate with different universities to offer uh, master's courses from, from uh, a range of universities and they are offered to people all around the world. Um, so the fact we haven't done an online open day is, is pretty crazy. Uh, and I can say for one, I'm really, really excited to have this, uh, to have this first one happen. Um, it's a bit of a, you know, it's a bit of an experiment and we'd love your feedback afterwards. Um, even if you just put it in the chat box below, do remember there's also a Slack chat as well. That, uh, the link for that will be in the email that you received to gain access to this call. So feel free to go on there. If maybe you uh, can only be here for a few minutes, maybe for an hour, um, but you really need to ask someone a question, maybe student support who, uh, who will be speaking later, or admissions or one of the tutors um, or the alumni, you can ask that in the different channels in Slack. Okay, the instructions for that are in your email. Um, so do head on over there if you don't have time to attend the whole day. It's worth mentioning, so uh, we'll, we'll have uh, four different sessions, which I'll, I'll talk you through in a moment. It's worth mentioning we will have 10 minute intervals as well, um, where you can go for a loo break, grab a cup of tea, um, or do whatever you want, or grab a beer. It could be the evening over <laughs> where you are. So, uh, so uh, we'll, we'll have chances to have breaks there as well. So um, it's an absolute pleasure to have you with us, and I'm, I'm personally really, really excited um, to, to get started. So just to give you a bit of background about Diploma MSc, I know some of you guys are accepted students, you might know some, some of you guys are um, just interested students, so you may have not applied already and that's no problem at all. So Diploma MSc, uh, owned by Learner Limited, was founded by Professor Steve Davis. So Steve is, um, uh, well first of all he's a massive character in the office and he's a, a great guy to work with. And uh, so Steve founded us back in uh, 2010 um, with the intention of delivering online education. He was I think it's fair to say he was one of the sort of pioneers of online education. He saw this coming. And in the sort of, you know, pandemic world that we're in at the moment, um, it's particularly poignant that online education is something that is readily available. Um, and we're proud to say we were, we were really at the start of that. So um, that's really, really exciting. So it started with diabetes. Um, so they started with a diabetes online course. Um, but it was very simple, very basic, but it delivered. And this was when the kind of board and, and the people who managed to play MSC realized this is going to be a big deal um, as, you know, internet speeds pick up and things like that. So uh, there are now over 21 uh, online healthcare courses, um, and that includes the recently launched MBA courses, one of which is a healthcare MBA. Um, so maybe uh, of interest to uh, many of you. Uh, we're based in Cardiff, which is in Wales, which if you can see the map behind, is I think the map's backwards, but it's it's just here, this tiny little tiny little bit uh, next to England. Um, so we're in there. That's where we're based, um, and that's where we hold our graduation, which is a great experience for us, being able to meet you guys after working so hard from wherever you are in the world um, to come and visit and and join us at graduation is um, a fantastic event. I've had the pleasure of, of being at two events so far. Um, so uh, so that's that's kind of the end result for you guys. So diplomacy specialise in offering postgraduate diplomas um, in one calendar year and that they do that by basically taking all the unnecessary breaks and gaps and then they squeeze it into that one academic year. It is intensive, um, it's hard work, um, it is something but it is something that is designed to be flexible, it's designed to work around your work commitments, your family commitments, your travel commitments, things like that and it, it, it's, it's designed to be 100% flexible and we do exercise that. Um, which is why it's such a hit with, with medical professionals. Um, we have people, uh, we have students from, I think it's over 60 countries around the world, which is really, really exciting. And that number is crawling up um, every cohort we have. Speaking of cohorts, we run, um, so we run two cohorts a year. We start one in September, we start one in March. 
Um, and then we, we love to see many of our students uh, who finish the postgraduate diploma go on to do the MSc or just sign up for the MSc uh, two year course. So I'm at my tech. So I wanted to give the, the chat box a bit of a test. Um, so you'll notice, uh, if you, any of you guys are new to Zoom, you'll notice at the bottom there is a chat function there. If you have any questions throughout the day, throw those questions in there and we will get to them. Um, I have my wonderful colleague Jody, who is behind the scenes as a sort of um, internal invigilator who will be taking those questions, popping them on the lists and asking the relevant people. When you've logged on, some of you may be a bit stuck. All you need to do is uh, join a uh, computer with audio. I've said that, you can't hear me, so that's not very useful. Um, but uh, you have any problems, you can join with, uh, you don't need to join with video because you are an attendee. So don't worry about um, your video being shown, that's no problem at all. So my first question to you guys, I wanna see, I wanna know where you're from, okay? So let's warm up that chat box and say, uh, so just go into the chat box and let me know which country you are dialing in from today and we'll do this throughout the day because it's so exciting um, to see all the all the places you're from um, i will start off uh, because we're in wales believe it or not so just like that type in where you're from and uh, we'd love to hear obviously if you don't want people to know which country you're from that is absolutely fine um, it's not something you have to do um, so yeah really exciting to have you with us i can see we've already got someone from mauritius which i believe is in a very different time zone um, so that's very brave of you. Thank you for thank you for being here. Um, so throughout the day, do uh, feel free to pop your where you're, you're dialing in from. Um, like I said, super excited to have students from so far around the world is really really exciting. So let's get round to the agenda for the day because um, you guys are going to be very sick of me and you're going to want to hear from the real heart of the company. And this is what today's going to be about. You have a chance to experience the internal um, operations and, and cogs that, that happen within Diploma MSc, what makes it work? I think it's very easy um, when people turn up and, and hear about us, um, it's very easy to, to kind of go, you know, where are these people? <laughs> you know, I'm not turning up to, to lectures or online courses. You know, with online courses, I don't know where they are. You do have content with your tutor, you do have contact with your course directors. Um, but it's very easy to sort of get lost in it and try and work out where people are. So you're going to experience the heart of Diploma Embassy. You're going to experience exactly who's behind the emails and the socials and all those things, um, which is really, really exciting. We've got someone in from UAE. Very cool. Nice to see you. Um, I think your time zone's all right. I think you're in the afternoon. So you're probably having this over lunch. <laughs> um, so the agenda. So we're going to start today um, in a few minutes with our wonderful admissions manager, Lindsay, uh, who will be answering all your questions. We have some questions prepared as well. Um, so if you have any questions for Lindsay, do get them in. Um, Lindsay will tell you all about her role, but essentially as soon as you hit that apply button, Lindsay is who you go through to. So Lindsay is the person. Lindsay receives your application and deals with it and will answer any or all of your questions, no matter how strange, <laughs> uh, to help you find the best education choice for you, whether that is with or without us. It's, it's important to mention. So then we'll have a little break, like I said, 10 minute break, and then 11 till 12, um, you'll have your chance to speak to our student support team. We're proud to have one of the largest student support teams here in Wales. Um, which is really important because you guys are around the world, you're in different time zones, um, you're, you're online, you know, it's so important to us that you guys are taken care of every day, okay? So you'll have a chance to speak to uh, Megan who works at the uh, student support team. She's gonna give you a bit of a demo of the online learning system, which is really exciting. Normally, uh, a student won't actually see the online learning system until their induction week when they start the course, the first week of their course. So you're gonna be able to see that beforehand, um, which I know for a lot of you will be something that you've really wanted to see. Um, you know, you wanna know what you're buying, <laughs> to, put it, to put it simply. Uh, you wanna test drive the car before you buy it. So that's gonna be your chance to, to see that. And then from uh, 12 to midday till one o'clock, like I said, this is GMT. Um, you will be able to, we'll have our talk to tutor session. I'm really proud to say we've got uh, Jacques Van Blerk, who is our course director for sports and exercise medicine. And we've also got Claire Holt, who is uh, our director for uh, the leadership in healthcare course and our new, uh, she's involved with our new MBA in healthcare management as well. So um, lots of experience there. Dr. Van Blerk actually started as a student of Diploma MSc. Did his, did his postgraduate diploma, did his MSc, 
became a tutor and now he's managing the course so that's that's pretty huge and so if you have any questions student wise or career wise um jacques will be a, a great resource uh, for that as well and then one o'clock till two we'll have an ask the alumni session i'm really really excited for you guys to meet these two um so we've got dr uh, mazin rashid from the united arab emirates um he'll be dialing in to answer some of your questions and and handsome Simbele as well who will be dialing in from south africa um so uh, really excited for you guys uh, to meet them as well so like i said at the start and and for people who have just joined welcome i know we've had a few people join uh, so welcome this is diploma msc you're through to our very first open day i know i can hear your cheers from here i've got the window open don't worry about it um, which is really really exciting and like i said we do have a slack system all the instructions are in your email if you don't want to ask a question publicly you can go on slack and just pop it on there um, again if you're only able to be here for maybe half an hour 45 minutes and you really want your question answered go into slack and um, ask your question. There are different channels there for each uh, section of the business. So go in there and ask your question and that will be um, answered for you um, if it doesn't get asked here. So uh, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna get Lindsay on the call and we're gonna start talking admissions. Um, but first, it's very hot here in Wales, which we can't say very often. It's 23 degrees Celsius here in Wales today, which is hotter than South Africa, we found out yesterday. So. We're enjoying that. I think this suit's going to come off pretty soon. So if you will just excuse me for 30 seconds, I'm going to uh, bring Lindsay into the call. Hopefully she's ready. We had a dress rehearsal yesterday, so uh, I'm feeling hopeful. 30 seconds. Okay. There she is. We did it. <laughs> it is always very exciting because this is our, like we said, it's our first open day. So this is pretty, this is all very experimental, it's, it's fair to say. Can you hear me all right, Linz? I can hear you. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Can anybody Perfect. else hear me? Yeah, I think, I think we're good. I think we're good. We can hear Linz. This is good. <laughs> Every time I just get a little bit less and less nervous because we know we know that things are actually going to work. <laughs> so how are you, Lindsay? You okay? I'm okay, thank you. Good, 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 good. Um, so we're just going to start um, keeping things nice and simple. I'm saying that I haven't got my questions up yet. Um, but for the for the people we're attending today, so um, tell us a little bit about um, you know how long you've worked at the company, what you do at the company. Just give us that overview. So my name is Lindsay. A lot of you have probably already spoken to me if you have been accepted or submitted an application. I am the admissions manager and I started in the company December 2015. So I've been here a little while and moved my way up and I take care of all the applications that come in, any queries that you have, they would come through to ourselves. And I want to stress that any questions you have fire away it doesn't matter whether you ask us one question or a thousand questions we're here to answer anything that's on your mind and help put you at ease absolutely i mean Lindsay, it's fair to say for someone who's been here i think it's been almost almost a year it'll be a year in july you are really the sort of diploma msc oracle aren't you if there's anything <laughs> if there's any like deep weird question you're, you're always the best person to ask right we are, we're happy to answer any questions no matter how weird or how many times you want to ask us we're here to help you of course of course so that's 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 really cool and i think this is going to be the best chance for people normally i know how busy your inbox is how busy it can be so this is a really great chance for um some of the people visiting today to to ask you some to ask you some, any questions they do have so if you guys do have questions there's a chat box just below feel free to pop them in there um lindsay will also be on our slack chat as well um so you can uh, open all things on there as well so I'm just gonna get our questions up. Cool, so we've got a few questions set here. We might interject if any of you guys out there have questions for Lindsay and, and the admissions department, do put them in the chat. Um, so first of all, just tell us a bit about the function of your role. How does it work? How, what happens when someone clicks apply? What, what happens from then on? And, and, and what is your involvement in that? Any 
questions that you have and um, anything at all about the courses, the content, entry requirements, any questions, then you're able to email us, you're able to schedule telephone calls with us and um, we've got an online chat system and we use WhatsApp as well. So the admissions team are here to look at the applications. We look at the criteria for the university that you've applied for. We'll double check the documents are all in order. We'll chase you for any documents that may be outstanding. And when we've got all the documents that we need and your application is ready to be submitted, we will send that off to the university for you. And then that's processed with them. And then you'll receive your acceptance letter from ourselves as well. There we go. Simple as that. <laughs> You've got a hello, Lindsay, in the chat. Someone said hello, Lindsay. You're going to have hello. to. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a relatively simple process, isn't it? I think it's um, the benefit we have with the courses being online is the fact that there's no, we don't need to be sending any physical documents, which is huge. It means we can get it done so much um, faster, which is, which is fantastic, um, which makes things really easy. So I can see we have a question in the chat already. Um, so someone has asked, can you please tell us more about the medical education course? What do you know? All the, the courses are designed to further your knowledge within those fields. So the medical education course is for those who maybe have um, sort of junior doctors underneath them. They may have your F1s, F2s in the UK or your registrars, and then they're helping them to sort of progress and guiding them. So it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to be a university lecturer or you're a tutor. It can be that you've got your foundation doctors underneath you and then you want to just progress a little bit further. Or it could be that you're looking, you've done your medical degrees or you know, you're a pharmacist and then you want to look at the education route. So we've also got students who go down that route as well. So there are a wide range of students that go on to the course. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's the, the best thing about it is we, this is a multidisciplinary course. OK, so especially for the medical education course, actually, um, particularly, um, first of all, medical education is actually one of our fastest growing courses. I've noticed this since I've started that it's been um, in huge demand um, because people want to pass on that, that, that gift. They want to pass on those kind of opportunities, um, which is really important. I think what's also poignant about the medical education course, like you said, is that we have people joining from everywhere. And medical education could be taught in so many different ways. We're experiencing it here in the fact that the way we teach medicine is, is very unique. You know, we don't hold, we're going to hear more about this, obviously, but we don't hold online lectures. Um, it's all done within, within group learning and self-directed learning. Um, so the medical ed education course is really exciting in that fact. That's something to what we'll be we'll passing on to you. Um, so on to the next question. Um, so tell us a bit more um, about the requirements. So we're going to have students here who, like, you know, we've had people interested in medical education, someone's interested in acute medicine. So say I'm an applicant, right? I'm turning up, I'm on the website, and I'm really interested in the medical education course. But, you know, I'm not sure if I want to spend 20 to 30 minutes applying to the course if I don't have the right documents. So what kind of, uh, what are the requirements for the course? What, what do people need? Um, and if they, maybe they don't have, you know, what might say on the, on the internet, is there something else that, you know, that might suffice? So with regards to the postgraduate diplomas that we offer within the medical areas, you do need to hold a medical degree or undergraduate degree in a health related science. And you do need to have clinical experience behind you in the field that you wish to study. We do have applicants from a nurse who may have done a diploma in nursing, so haven't got the degree behind them, but they have 10 years experience of working, for example, within the field of diabetes. And so we do accept applications from them. And if you don't meet the entry requirements, then we will just ask you to undertake an assessment so that firstly, we can test your knowledge within the area that you wish to study and also that you're capable of working at a level seven qualification. Mm -hmm. So if there's a course that you think you want to apply for, but you don't quite hold the undergraduate degree, but you do hold a diploma, then please contact us, discuss your experience with us because each application is looked at on an individual basis. So we will look at your sort of health related science degree or the knowledge that you've got, and then we'll make a decision based on that. So. It's not necessarily a direct no if you don't have the undergraduate degree. So if you've got a diploma, then please contact us to discuss any requirements. 
Fantastic. So it's it's not necessarily, you know, you might see those entry requirements on the, the web, but if you think, oh, I have something like that, but it's a little bit different, there's that doesn't mean by any means that they should leave, does it? it you know, they may have, there may be another way in which we can we can get them off the court. Yes, yeah, certainly contact us, let us know what your background is, the qualifications that you do have, and then we'll be able to advise you further. Fantastic. So we've had a question here, and I should apologise, but I can't refer to your names um, specifically because we are recording the session. Um, so for data purposes um, that we have here in, in Europe, we you know I wouldn't want to mention your specific names. But we've had a question here. Um, hey team, I am a full time working doctor in the NHS. Uh, I'm doing a postgraduate diploma in respiratory medicine uh, with a plan to do MSc. I'm not sure how feasible it will be for me to do the course with my commitments and work life balance, considering I do take annual leaves uh, to travel to meet my family as well. Um, so that's interesting. So we've got someone here who works full time in the NHS, which obviously at the moment is is um, going to be a huge role that they're playing. But they've also got family commitments. So this is a this is a common question we get, isn't it, Lynn? So what would you say yes. about them? The, the recommended time that you should spend on your studies is approximately two hours per day. Because there's no live lectures that you need to watch, you do have the flexibility to study around your work commitments. With regards to the MSc, module one will run in exactly the same format as what the postgraduate diploma modules are. So you'll know the time that you've spent on them as well. And again, there's, there's no set times that you need to participate. When it comes to the professional project, you have your six months to complete that. So that does, is done in your own time. So again, if you go to meet family, it doesn't matter as long as you can participate and, and you can complete that professional project within the six months, then you'll be fine. There we go. So we, it's, so it's worth mentioning that we have, I mean, how many, how many of the students, I mean, roughly, we're not going to know specifically, but how many of the students that we have uh, work full time, do you think? The majority of our students work full time and um, you're all registered healthcare professionals. So you're extremely busy in work. And then the, the two hours, although it seems a lot, you know, with module one, it's always more difficult because you're not quite sure what's happening you're finding your feet you're getting used to online learning again because a lot of our students haven't done any learning since they've done the medical degrees or the undergraduate degrees but then once you've gotten into the swing of things when you get to module two and onwards you'll be absolutely fine as long as you can just commit the two hours really absolutely absolutely and i think anyone hearing that might be uh, a little bit nervous you know thinking that okay this is 100 percent online learning but there is an induction week isn't it i think we're going to talk more about this but recently we implemented an induction week so it's a week before the course is that right um which helps people get used to the course how does how does that work what, what happens in that week so with that week it will happen the week before you do to commence on the course you will look at the learning platform you will be shown how to navigate around and the student support team that will be on later will be able to sort of show you what the learning platform looks like and what to expect more. And there's modules that you will complete throughout the week so you don't do it all in one day. Each day a new module will be released and it will talk through what to expect and it will just put you at ease really. We've been doing online courses as Alid said so we know what we're doing and we're here to help you. You also have the dedicated student support team which are there where you can schedule your telephone calls with them you can message them so we do have sort of a quite a large student support team that's there to help you so we do understand and we will hold your hand from module one right up to module six it doesn't matter whether you email us once or a thousand times we're here to help you and guide you through absolutely absolutely and this is one reason to, to certainly stick around for, for some time uh, this afternoon we'll be speaking to some of our alumni um, and some of the stories those guys have about how they've had to overcome personal, family and, and health uh, difficulties during, you know, doing a full time work and doing the course, but have still come out with some of the highest marks is really, really inspiring. So I do hope uh, you guys can, can stick around for that one. But you mentioned um, that, that uh, the students will need a reference. So they need a reference to get onto the course. So um, how, how does this reference work? Who do they need it from? Um, and so how long does it need to be? The reference can be from a work colleague, an employer or a former tutor. All you need to do during the application process is provide their name and email address and just let them know that we're going to be contacting them. And then we will send out a reference form on your behalf. 
and we just ask them how long they've known you and in what capacity and if they'd like to provide any further details. So it doesn't have to go into sort of too much detail about you really. And then what we will do is we will chase your reference for you on a weekly basis until that's received. If we don't have a response from them, then we'll keep you updated on a weekly basis and we will just ask for an alternative reference. So it doesn't have to go into you know, great detail. It doesn't have to be a tutor. It can be a work colleague as well. OK, fantastic. So again, it comes across a lot, a lot simpler than than maybe people might think, which is which is great. Um, so again, talking about that, that application process, so they can get the reference really easy. You know, it's a colleague, it's someone they've worked with um, and they just need to basically say, look, here's my proof that I've worked with this person for so long. Yeah. Um, so the personal statement then, I, I remember applying for university myself, I did a business degree um, four years ago, I remember working really, really hard on a personal statement, it had to be pages and pages long um, and you had to come up with all sorts of, you know, descriptive words and, and, and using all sorts of, um, of descriptive text to, to make that. How, how long does this personal statement need to be for, for our students and, and what do they need to mention in that, in that statement? So because all our students are healthcare professionals, we don't have to have you know, pages and pages of, of personal statement. You should be looking about 500 words and you just need to be specific and say what has interested you about the course and why you would like to undertake it. If you're maybe, as I spoke earlier, um, a nurse, a registered nurse who's done a diploma rather than the undergraduate degree if you just go into it a little bit of detail about the work that you're currently undertaking and the patients that you're currently seeing then that's absolutely fine so the more information you can give us if you're not quite following the the entry route that we ask for the better but about 500 words just saying why you would like to undertake the course is absolutely fine fantastic okay that's really that's really helpful like i say it can be quite a grueling process the application process but i think it's important for, for everyone watching i think it's important for you to remember that you are a medical professional okay and all and and the biggest thing is just the proof needing the proof of that um once we know that we know that you're you're going to be a massive asset to us and that you're going to be someone who contributes so much to the course as well um i know we've had a few people join so i just wanted to say welcome uh, my name is ali i'm speaking to uh, lindsay here our applications manager uh you come through to our very first digital open day welcome you can hear the cheers i promise <laughs> uh it's great to have you with us uh, like i said we've got a packed agenda today um so we'll be speaking to lynn's now uh, up until about 10 to 11 uh, and we'll take a short break before speaking to our student support department and getting that all important demonstration of the online system. Remember, this is going to be an exclusive look at the system that normally you, you'd be able to see when you start the course. So make sure you do stick around till then. But till now, uh, I've got a few more questions for you, Lindsay. Remember, guys, if you do want to ask Lindsay any specific questions, do pop them in the chat below. Um, if it's something you don't want to talk about, maybe on video, we do have the Slack channel, okay? If you want to join on Slack, we do have instructions to join that in the email that you received. But uh, further ado, so we've talked about the specifics of the application, you know, the documents we need to put in, um, all sorts uh, of, of bits and pieces, but actually are probably a lot easier and, and not so uh, time draining to, to do. So I've got all those things to you, you know, maybe I've been chased by a couple of members of staff, um, just a call or an email. Um, so now that that's happened, what's, what, what happens once my application is complete? What's the process there? So once we have received all the documents that are needed for your application then we will submit that to the review panel at the university they take approximately 48 hours to make a decision but sometimes that can take slightly longer for example we're currently running our early bid discount so we do have an influx of applications coming in so we will take slightly longer to process them or if it's coming closer to application deadline date then again it can take slightly longer but you should receive a response within 48 hours if you're accepted onto the course then you will receive an acceptance letter via email and then there is a link on that acceptance letter where you're able to then click on that and make the initial deposit payment and then you also select whether you want to pay the amounts in one lump sum or whether you would like to follow a payment plan if you select a payment plan then the accounts team will then send you an email like you've received for your acceptance letter and there will be a link on there where you click that link and then you're able to make the next deposit payment for, for the next installment for the course 
Fantastic. So that's, that seems really simple. And something you mentioned there, which I now feel very guilty for not mentioning, uh, is our early bird discount. I did, uh, I meant to mention that at the start. I missed it out of my notes, so it just didn't happen. Um, I'm too busy presenting the weather here. Um, so we do have an early bird discount, guys, running. That early bird discount is uh, actually ending on the 31st of May. Um, that discount essentially entitles you to, depending on the course, either a 300 or 500 pound discount off your course fees um, if you're able to get your application through and paid um, by the 31st of May. Um, so let's talk about financing the course. Um, so some of the courses, uh, again, they're all at different price points now. Um, some of them can be, we know can be too high a sum to pay in one lump sum. So if I'm a student who really wants to take the course, I can't get funding from my employer. Um, what, what's, what's on offer for me? What, what can help me fund that course? So we do offer payment plans, so depending on the price bracket of the course that you've selected, um, where you pay the initial deposit payment, and then we have a set amount that you would pay then every other month. If you wasn't able to pay every other month, then you can speak to our finance department, and they may be able to spread it um, sort of further for you over the year. But when you graduate, you have to have cleared all your, your fees. So you would have to pay within the year. Otherwise, you wouldn't be able to graduate, unfortunately. OK, OK. So that, that keeps things nice and simple. So there's a payment plan there, which obviously is something we haven't mentioned yet, um, which is unique to us. This is one thing that, that we offer that are some, some of our competitors don't, is the fact that you can pay the course with instalments, um, which works well. Because again, these, you know, one of our students, uh, applicants asked earlier, you know, he's a full time NHS worker. Um, it means that as you know, as you go through with your with your, your monthly paychecks, it means that you can pay for the course as those paychecks come in, instead of having to do this you know saving process beforehand, which is um, which is really 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 uh, really helpful. So we're going to go to the sort of the sad end of applications. So we do unfortunately have to reject some applications. Don't we? we do uh, actually. So say, you know, someone's put in the, the hard graft, or actually, what has we found out the easy graft um, of putting their application through. Say they get rejected or they don't get, um, don't get onto the course this time. How does that work? How, how are they dealt with? So what will happen is if you unfortunately are rejected, then generally the reasons that you're rejected is because you don't hold the relevant undergraduate degree in a health related science and you lack the clinical experience to be able to undertake the course. With the letter of rejection, I will go into detail to explain why you've been rejected um, and also give you sort of examples of the kind of depth of knowledge that you need to be able to undertake the course. So at least you can see exactly why you have been rejected. With our leadership and healthcare course, you have to have a minimum of three years leadership experience behind you. So if you're, um, for example, a qualified nurse, um, registered qualified nurse, and you've applied, but you've only been um, qualified for three, three months, and then you want to do the leadership course, mm -hmm. you would be rejected because you don't lack, um, so, sorry, you lack the um, experience behind you but then if you applied sort of three years later then you would be accepted so it will go into detail to explain why you've been rejected so don't get disheartened you can have a look and then see what we've said to you absolutely absolutely we still love you <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's gonna be one of those things that if, if unfortunately you are rejected from a course um it, it doesn't mean goodbye forever um like like Lindsay mentioned you know you will be getting um, a specific breakdown of why the, your application didn't go through. Um, it means that then you can set yourself goals and maybe reply again in six months, maybe apply in a year. Um, you know, there's, there's always going to be that chance to come back. We're not going anywhere. Okay, so um, actually, interestingly, something I should mention is since the, the pandemic, um, our applications actually have increased because we know that there's that extra demand for online learning, which makes the September cohort um, really, really exciting. Um, so I'm, I'm really excited for that. Um, so we've had quite a few people join in the last five to ten minutes. So I'm just going to just do another welcome. So my name's Alid. Um, you're through to the Diploma MSC uh, Open Day. Uh, welcome, the first one. Uh, and I'm speaking here with our admissions manager, Lindsay, for maybe another uh, ten minutes uh, before we move on and get that all important uh, discussion with student support and that uh, fantastic inside look, exclusive uh, inside look into the online learning system. Uh, that we run here and, and how we manage to do the learning and produce the results we do 
um, without having scheduled lectures. So, Linz, I wanted to go back to how the course runs. So, we're, we're putting a postgraduate diploma into one year, yet we're offering this for people who are full time in work, have family commitments. I mean, how, how does that work? What, what have they changed? What's different about the course, and, and how is it structured to allow that to happen? So, with the, the course, there's no set times that you need to participate on the course. As we've said, we just recommend the two hours per day. So, the, the main sort of aspects of our course are clinical case scenarios with discussion prompts, and they're the integral part of the course. It's worth 40% of the overall mark for the postgraduate diplomas. They're sort of real life clinical case scenarios. So they are interesting, they are exciting, and that's where you would be looking at spending the majority <clears throat> of your time. You'll be given approximately three to four clinical case scenarios per week um, with the discussion prompts. And when you speak to the student support team now, they'll be able to give you an example and um, show you what it looks like. And also, if you'd like to see a clinical case scenario for a specific course, then please feel free to email me and I'll be able to send those to you and you can have a good look because it, it shows you the kind of questions you're asked, the depth of knowledge, what to expect. So it's always really handy to see those. So please email me and I'll be able to send you an example. Yeah, absolutely. So there's, there's, what we try to stress here is that it's not a case that we keep everything a secret you know, until you, you hand over the money and go on the course. If, if there's a part of the course you want to see, if there's, um, like Lynn said, you know, a, a, a specific part of the course or assessment that you want to see and you want to know how it works, you can get access to that. Um, and it's worth noting that if you do have any questions specifically about the assessments, about how the assessments work, um, do put them in the chat now, because even if, if Lynn's um, can't answer those, we do have the student support fund coming up who are going to be the people, like Lynn said, who hold your hand through this course. Whilst you may be studying on your own, you're not alone whilst you're on this course. Um, you have one of the largest student support teams here in Wales that are ready to help you. Um, we have the pleasure of working in the same office with them, and they're an absolutely lovely bunch. Um, I'm trying to get kudos with them because I know some of them are watching now. <laughs> Um, but yeah, they're an absolutely uh, lovely bunch. And it's worth mentioning that even during the current pandemic that we're experiencing here, business hasn't changed, has it, Lynn? Um, you know, everything's running as normal. I mean, if anything, we're, we're busier, right? We are. That's right. <laughs> so that's <definitely, laughs> that's the good thing about online courses. Absolutely. It's a huge benefit. We are running business as usual. We're all working from home, as you can see by my what looks like I'm about to start presenting the weather. I thought this would be a cute idea because we've got people logging in from around the world, which is really exciting. Um, and now I'm realising I just look like a weather presenter. I've even got the look, I've even got the weather presenter clicker. <laughs> it's awful. Um, but it is business as usual here, which is which is really really exciting at Boma MSC, and it means we're getting more applications than ever. But what I will say is that the earlier you guys get your applications in, the better. You know, if there are documents missing or we need to work with you to get uh, the right things for application, this is the best time to do it. Um, so, Linz, before we leave you, obviously, guys, if you do have any questions for Lindsay and the admissions department, please put them in the chat now uh, before Linz does a legger um, and has uh, served her time um, and reattends to the kids as well. I'm sure they're uh, probably hungry. <laughs> Um, so yeah, do put your, your questions below, uh, but I'm going to ask one more question about, you know, we've talked about um, how you put applications together, rejections, the course itself. I know that also you've attended a number of uh, graduation days. Um, they're my favourite time because as much as I love doing online courses, um, it's, you know, it's kind of weird because you do this course and then you get to the end and you're like, okay, what's happening? Um, but you, they do get invited to uh, a graduation. So let's talk about the end of the course. You know, if they can't attend the graduation, um, what happens? And if they can attend the graduation, what does that graduation look like? So the graduation is exciting and um, you're invited to the university and it's a full graduation day. If you attend graduation, then you will be handed your certificate on the day. If you are unable to attend, then the university will send your certificate out to you via the post. And, but it does take approximately two to three months after graduation for you to receive that. But you will receive your transcript beforehand and that's sent via email. So you'll be able to see and you've passed the course, 
the grades that you had per module and then you can wait for your certificate to attend and um, graduation is always exciting and um, it's always lovely to be able to see the students because obviously I speak to you at the very beginning of the process but I can still remember you because you're a person you're not just a number to us so it's lovely when you actually but the faces to the names and I recognize you and you come up to me so it's it's always lovely and you can see other students that did the same course as you maybe some that was in the same tutor groups as yourselves so it's just a really fun happy day and it's just lovely to sort of see the achievements that you've got absolutely so obviously we we do understand that there are people from all around the world um some of you guys you know have really put all your heart and soul and your your finance into this course and getting this qualification but unfortunately there are students aren't there that can't attend the graduation ceremony um so tell us quickly about about that process what happens if they can't attend does that mean they don't get the certificate or no so if you are unable to attend then you just let the university know that you're unable to come and then they will send your certificate out to you via the post to your home address and it does take approximately two to three months after graduation so if you something that you're probably not thinking about but if you do happen to move house um during the course then you must let the university know of your new address or if you put a temporary address down then please let us know the permanent address because whatever the address that you sign up to the course with that's the address that they're going to send it to so you must let us know if if you move absolutely absolutely so you will get a certificate you will get um certificates um from from the university i said that was my last question but i'm going to be really <laughs> naughty and ask one more and just like, oh, look, every <laughs> um tell us about the certificate because obviously we understand that some employers aren't quite you know down with online learning yet say that like it's like a kit. um but you know they're not they don't quite understand it so you know what does that certificate look like and, and how are employers going to going to react to that um, you know, does it does it mention online learning? Does it not? How does that certificate look? So the certificate that you receive is exactly the same as the certificate you would receive if you did a full time campus based course with the university. It will have the university's logo on it. It will have your name, the course that you undertook and whether you had a pass a merit or distinction. It makes no reference to the fact that the course was studied online. So it's exactly the same as a campus based certificate. Again, if any of you would like to see a copy of the certificate that you will receive, I have one for the dermatology course because we don't send them out. I don't have one for every course, unfortunately, but I can share with you an example of the certificate for the dermatology course. So I'm more than happy to show you that if anybody wants to have a quick look, then just send me an email or put in the chat and I'm happy to, to send you a copy. Fantastic. You can get a sneak peek of everything. You can. <laughs> Oh, that's fantastic. So it's, it's really worth implementing here that and, and, and enforcing that um, there's no part of the course that we want to hide. There's no hidden secrets in the application process. We only want that deposit from you once you're 100 percent confident with the course you're about to take. Um, we want you to be 100 percent secure, 100 percent in the know of how that course is going to work. And hopefully um, the last sort of 40 minutes uh, with Linz, lovely Linz, who we've, we've, we've really taken time out of a busy schedule to chat to you is, has helped with that. Do you remember guys, uh, if you do have questions for Lindsay, you haven't had the chance to ask them, you can go into our Slack channel, um, the instructions of which are in the email you received um, uh, earlier today, uh, where you can ask Lindsay questions and, and we'll get around to answering those. But then thank you so much. No problem. <laughs> really appreciate it. So, um, so what we're gonna do now is, uh, so we've heard from Lindsay from the business department, we're gonna take a quick 10 minute break and pop to the loo. Uh, you didn't need to know that. And, uh, and then we're going to come back and speak to Megan from our, uh, from our student support department. I almost forgot that, um, which is going to be great. And so what you're going to get there is that Megan's going to go through our online learning platform. She's going to talk a lot about the, uh, the actual course itself and what you'll expect. And again, like, like we said, there are people logging in from all around the world. So Lindsay is also going to tell us a lot about how, um, how you're treated as one of our students. It doesn't matter which country you're from, the UK, Ireland, we've had people logging in from the United Arab Emirates, Mauritius. You know, it doesn't matter where you're from, you are a Diploma MSc student and you're also a student of the university um, that accredits that course. And we can't stress that enough. So we are going to take a quick 10 minute break now. Feel free to grab a drink of water. Um, or whatever you want um, and uh, and we'll be back in 10 minutes with 
Megan. Okay, so what you can do now, if, you, if you've got enough to do for 10 minutes, do feel free to pop over on Slack, um, pop some questions on there to some of our staff. They will get back to you as soon as they can. Before I do go, um, I know that uh, some of you are just dialed in, so let me tell you a bit about the agenda that's happening. So uh, we just heard from Lindsay there from our admissions. Admissions? I can't stop talking now. This is, this is important. We're only an hour in. So from our admissions department, um, and we had a lovely chat with Lindsay. So we're now going to have at 11 o'clock, so like I said, we're going to have that break. At 11 o'clock, we're going to speak to our student support department. We're going to chat to lovely Megan, who actually only lives down the road from me. Um, but we can't hang out because of uh, social distancing, of course. Um, and then she's going to give you a, a, a demo of our online learning system. Um, so a sneak peek at that system. At uh, midday till one o'clock, then we're going to talk to our wonderful tutors. I'm delighted to have Jacques Van Gluck from our sports and exercise medicine course and Claire Holt from our leadership course dialing in to talk to you about what it's like to tutor on the courses. And it's your chance to talk to the people who will be your number one contact when you uh, carry out your course. And they will be there for you the entire time. And um, so there's a chance to speak to them. At one o'clock till two then, we will be talking to our fantastic stars of the course, our alumni of course, who have completed the courses, graduated, they've both been to the graduation ceremonies here in uh, Little Wales, up here. Um, they have been to the graduation ceremony, so they can tell you everything about the course, um, any, any concerns you have, and also they're going to tell you about what their life looks like now. Um, I can tell you it's pretty exciting, some of the things that they are getting up to thanks to doing you know, a qualification with, um, with Diploma MSc. So that's, that's really, really cool. Um, so I can see some questions coming in. Keep them coming in, guys. We will get round to them um, and we'll, we'll add them to some of our questions uh, if we can. So we're going to take eight minutes out. I will return. I promise. I'm not going anywhere. I will return after, after a few minutes break and uh, we shall proceed. So thank you very much. Hey, guys. Hope you're all well. Uh, I've returned. Um, from from the break so well, you all, I hope you all had a nice break all watered uh, all ready to go um, I forgot to mute my mic so apologies if you heard me nattering with I live with my flatmate here so obviously we're all working from home at the moment so um, so I'm living here in Cardiff Cardiff Bay um, sunny warm Cardiff Bay which we can't say this a lot um, here in Wales so to put that in perspective where we're dialing in from is here we've had people uh, dialing in from the United Arab Emirates on here uh, I feel like I, I'm doing the weather. I feel like I'm doing the weather. Um, and it's it's been quite exciting to, to see all you guys come in. Let me panically looking for Mauritius. Where is Mauritius? Um, but it's been great to have you dialing in. Uh, we've been doing so far. Um, if you guys have just logged in, you are through to the Diploma MSc Open Day. Um, our first online open day. Yes. Um, and so far, I think it's gone quite well. The feedback's been all right. Um, we just heard from our wonderful admissions manager, Lindsay. Uh, in a few minutes, we're going to hear from our student support staff, specifically Megan Welsh, who, um, who I'm delighted uh, to have with us. She's an absolute joy to work with and get more points in uh, with the rest of the staff. I'm going to have such a high reputation after this, I promise. Um, but thank you so much for dialing in. Uh, if you have dialed in in the last uh, hour before we started, do let us know which country you're dialing in from. We'd love to hear. Um, so in the chat box down below, just type in your country. Obviously, don't feel like you have to uh, if you don't want to give sort of that information away. It's obviously your, your choice. Uh, but yeah, do let us know where you're dialing in from. Really exciting. So we're in Wales here. We're based in Wales, uh, just to the left of England, just that little bit that sticks out. Um, so do let us know where you're from. We've had people so far from the United Arab Emirates, Ireland, um, Mauritius, someone dialed in from Mauritius. Um, there's some pretty mean time zones going on. So it's great to have you guys with us. So moving onwards, if you have joined, we're about to speak to our student support team um, until 11.50, uh, then we'll have another break. Um, we're then going to talk to two of our fantastic tutors um, at midday, uh, again for another 50 minutes. Um, we'll be speaking to Jacques Van Blerk and Claire Holt. Uh, Jacques is from our sports and exercise medicine course and Claire is from our leadership course. Remember, if you're not interested in those courses, it's okay. These guys have been tutoring for us with many, 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 uh, for many, many years. And even Jacques has actually learned with us as well. He was a student before he became a tutor for us, um, which is great. So he tutors from South Africa. Um, and so you can ask him all kinds of questions, whether you're interested in the sports course or not. That's no problem. 
at one o'clock then we'll be speaking to our alumni it will be your chance to ask you know the, the people who have been become the product of diploma msc and they're out there now challenging the healthcare and medical landscape um, after taking this msc so uh yeah really excited to speak to those so we're still here for another three hours i'm your host alid nelms i'm delighted to be here for our first open day and i'm delighted to have you here as well so what i'm going to do now i'm just going to spend 30 seconds to introduce megan um if i can do this so do give me 30 seconds i'm just going to dial her in She's really hoping I can't find her now. Good morning. There she is. Hey, it's going well, isn't it, so far, I think? Yeah, well done. <laughs> I think we've got it. I, I'm more worried about the technology, really, than us. I think we know our jobs. <laughs> yeah, I, I like, think I know what I'm talking about. Oh, definitely, definitely. So, uh, how are you? You okay? I'm okay, thank you. How are you? I'm very good. I'm very good. This feels this feels quite fun. This feels like you know on the news when they get a guest on. Yeah. <laughs> it feels a bit like I feel. You know, I should ask for your comments on you know the reason. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not going to do that. We're going to ask you questions that only you you know, Meg. So it's fine. Okay. So where are you dialing in from, Meg? I mean, I know, but tell everyone. <laughs> uh, I'm also dialing in from Cardiff Bay. Um, I'm probably see or flat from here, to be honest. Yeah yeah <laughs> it's kind of weird isn't it because we have yeah <laughs> staff around the world yeah yeah lift share <laughs> so yeah people like Meg are my heroes um so Meg, we're going to ask you some questions about student support um about your role um but first of all just for for you know the thousands uh watching um what what tell us about your role tell us about how long you've worked at Learner. just give us a bit of a you know an insight into who is Meg. So um, I'm Megan, like I said, I am a senior member of the student support team. Um, I'm senior of the postgraduate diploma, so that's the first year. Um, there are five other members um, and one of them is part time. So there's myself. Um, there is Robin, who's the head of student support. Uh, Emma, who is the senior in charge of the MSCs. Um, Oliver, Abby and Jazz. And we love them all. <laughs> there we go. So tell um, us about obviously student support. It, it pretty much has it in the title, but tell us what, what's sort of like every day for you. What 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 can you expect in the team? What happens there? Um, so really, we're just here to support students uh, right from the moment they become a student. So once you pass the application process and the cohort begins, um, right up until you achieve um, and graduate at the end. So we're just here to help you to the best abilities. Um, we're the first point of call really for students. Um, for, for anything that arises during your studies, it should come straight to us. Um, and if we can't help directly, we can always point you in the right direction, put you in touch with our department, or um, send you on to your, your link university. Um, we do have a bit of everything, really. Mm. Um, anything from the Moodle platform, how it works, your grading, your tutors, um, help with understanding how the assignments might work, um, help with turn it in and plagiarism, um, extenuating circumstances such as illness or bereavement or any um, kind of disability support. So if all of that comes to us um, before it goes to anyone else. Absolutely. So it's not, I think a lot of people will probably hear student support, they probably think it's just sort of a technology, you know, a role to help with the technology of it all. Um, mm -hmm. It's, it's worth mentioning actually that the you know the technology of the course is actually relatively simple to use it's designed to be easy to use but i'd actually say you guys go further than that you really are you're that best mate aren't you over the phone i guess <laughs> yeah so um yeah we're, av we're available nine to five monday to friday all the time um students can call us at any point they can talk about any issues they might be having with, like I said, literally anything on the course, and if we're not able to help ourselves, we're always the first point of call to point in the right direction, to the right university department, um, or anything really. 
Absolutely, absolutely. So, um, guys, if you do have any questions for, for Meg uh, and the student support department, remember, Megan's going to be your, your best resource for everything to do with the course. So, if you, if you have any questions about um, how you're assessed, about how the course is carried out, um, the tutors will actually be pretty good for that. So, we won't put all the pressure on Meg. Um, but, uh, yeah, if you have any questions about the course, Megan's going to be um, your best person for that. If you do have questions, put them in the chat below. If you had questions for Lindsay uh, that you weren't able to ask, or if you have questions that you don't want to ask or be answered on video, we do have our Slack platform. To log into Slack, there are instructions and uh, details on your welcome email, um, which you would have used to get here. Uh, so do head back on there and you can do that. So, uh, so let's, let's talk more about, um, you know, we, we've got students around the world. Uh, I think from, I've said over 60 countries, but I think it's more. Um, they're all over the place, aren't they? And, and we're absolutely delighted for that. The biggest reason is that we have students who, every, every healthcare system is different. That's the beauty of it. You know, we're seeing this in a pandemic now, you know, we're seeing teams from around the world try and discover a treatment or even a cure for the, the COVID-19 pandemic. And that's really exciting for us because we're able to be in a place where we're bringing that knowledge and experience together in one place. Um, in one online platform where people can learn from each other. Um, I'm taking too much of the camera time there. So uh, that leads on to my question, uh, which is, you know, you said that they're available nine to five. So if we've got, you know, we had a student, uh, we've got a student here from Mauritius, um, from the United Arab Emirates, through a few hours ahead. If a student are on, you know, the other side of the world, we can, well, literally, you know, we have a lot of Australian, New Zealand students um, uh, who are on the other side of the world. How can do they get the same you know amount of support as someone here in the UK or in Europe? Yeah, absolutely, of course. Um, we're here for all of our students. We appreciate the time zones can sometimes be a bit difficult. Um, obviously, I said we work nine to five, um, which is true, but we do have some flexibility in that. So, um, if you need us slightly earlier or slightly later in the day, um, and you do require a phone call, we we can arrange that for you. Um, also, we're always available via email. It's the joys of the internet. Um, doesn't matter what time you contact us, we'll get back to you. Um, normally within about 48 hours. Um, so obviously, like you said, the most difficult time zones are Australia and New Zealand, but we can always make arrangements the students require. Fantastic. Okay, that's, I mean, that's awesome. Um, it really does mean we can accommodate from, like we said, people on the other side of the world, which is great. Uh, so we've had a question. You ready for this? On the Think spot. So. It wasn't there, it wasn't <laughs> the questions. Um, so one of our students, are, like I said, I do apologise because I can't mention your specific names because this is being recorded. Um, so for data protection purposes, keep all safe out there on the digital waves. Um, so a student has asked, hey Megan, uh, just wanted to ask, there will be a few days when we are abroad on travel um, or have some other commitments and we are not able to participate during those times. What happens then? Um, let's start with that because he sort of asked two questions. So, so there's, so they might need to take a few days off, maybe even a week or two off. How does that work in such an intensive course? What, what support do you offer? Okay, so obviously as the course is entirely flexible, um, each course runs in six weeks period. So there's six modules in the postgraduate diploma and they run every six weeks with a two week break minimum. So over Christmas that's slightly longer um, and over the summer that's slightly longer as well. Um, so we normally advise people try and put their holidays um, in those two week breaks just to avoid missing any key content however if you're away for work if you have other commitments um there's always potentially extensions if you're away for a long period of time um, and it's a work commitment um additionally as i said it's a flexible course so um i'll show you a bit later on how that works mm. but um that means that you can comment um, and participate any time because you don't have to tune in um, to any particular online lectures, you can contribute to the course uh, whenever you're available to within that week. So if you're away for two or three days, say that's uh, Monday to Thursday, you can still contribute to the course Friday, Saturday, Sunday with absolutely no um, no markdown, no late fee, anything like that. Okay, fantastic. So like, I think what really epitomizes is the fact that we've just launched a uh, expedition and wilderness medicine course. We have, yeah. So we're about to have students on top of mountains. Uh, <laughs> so we're taking distance learning to an all new distance, um, which is really exciting. I think it's a really cool course to have. Um, you know, so there's, there's really no boundaries to, to how we can support you. Time zones, 
if you do need breaks, holidays, like Meg said, there's always going to be that two week break um, every module anyway. Um, so, you know, you can hit the beaches then <laughs> before we get back to it. Uh, so, that's, so that's a really great opportunity. It's really great to hear. Um, so we also asked, uh, this is more, I guess this is more of an applications question, so I'll see if I can answer this one. Um, so uh, he's asked, also, are the courses and diploma uh, have international recognition? Um, so for that one, basically, essentially, the courses are, um, and this is something that we obviously, people get a bit confused because they'll see Diploma MSc, they'll see University of South Wales, you know, Trinity St. David, you know, they're going to see loads of different universities. So the way the courses work is that we offer, we, we deliver the courses ourselves um, with our online platform, but the qualifications are awarded by UK universities. Um, so the courses will be, you'll have a certificate that says University of South Wales, you know, Trinity St. David there are recognized UK qualifications. Um, as for your own individual medical boards, um, there's a lot of countries out there. So unfortunately, we don't know, you know where we're recognized specifically. So we would recommend that you contact your local medical board um, to check if that qualification is recognized. We tend to find as a UK provider of education um, that does carry a great deal of gravitas um, around the world, uh, which is really nice. Um, so that, that should really help you. If you want more information on that, I'd recommend going over to our Slack channel. We have a channel there for admissions. Um, put the question in there and, uh, and Lindsay, uh, who you may have uh, seen earlier, will get back to you on that and, and give you a bit more information on recognition. Um, we love having students from, from different countries, but we realize that with healthcare being so different everywhere, it means that qualifications are treated differently, et cetera, et cetera. So thank you for your questions. Guys, if you do have any questions, do post them in the chat. We've got Meg here till about 10 to 12. I'm going to let you go. Um, I've got you to then, uh, which is really exciting. We will get around to the modal demo very, very shortly. So very shortly, if you guys have joined us, we're about to take a look, uh, an exclusive inside look. Um, this feels a bit like Ross Kemp on Gangs. Um, an exclusive look into the online learning system, uh, which you guys will be using on your course from wherever you are in the world you'll be able to have an exclusive look into that and how that works. But before we do, I'm going to hold, question, hold uh, Megan back for some more questions. Um, so tell us, so we talked, Lynn talked a lot about the learning experience, but you guys, you know, you answer questions on this daily. Um, someone said good morning. Good morning. <laughs> uh, so tell us about the learning experience. Um, how exactly will they study? You know, how many hours are expected? What kind of methods of, of learning will there be? Um, that's a lot of questions uh, in one question. Okay. Let's start with the first one. How will they study? How does it work? Okay, so all of our courses are entirely based on our learning platform Moodle. Um, standardly, there are, like I just said, six modules for each course, and each module is six weeks long. Um, so they're quite rigid set times that you're studying, you know, exactly when you're meant to be studying and when you're not. The, um, I know personally, during my undergraduate um, and my postgraduate, I felt like over Christmas and over Easter and stuff, I still had to keep revising and stuff to keep working. Um, none of that on this course. In those two-week breaks, you are entirely on a break. There's no work that runs over. The module is finished um, and it's done, which is nice. You know, you, you always get those two-week breaks. Um, these that, that layout can differ slightly from course to course. So make sure that you have a chat with admissions about what the layout for your course is. But for almost all of our courses, that's exactly what it is. Um, you can expect to put in, I guess, around 200 hours a module, but that includes literally everything. That's all the course content, all of your assignments, all of the extra reading, any revision you do. Um, and that would be sort of the max that you'd, you'd need to put in. Um, and it can vary person to person. So if you're in a module, um, then maybe you're a specialist in, maybe maybe this is something that you know about, um, then you can expect a lot less time um, to be taken in that module. Lovely, okay, so it's, and like we said, it's all self-directed learning, isn't it? Which means mm -hmm. that whilst 200 hours for a module might seem like a lot, if you're a morning learner, you can learn in the morning. If you're a night learner, I know I'm not, I'm rubbish from about 3 yeah. p.m. <laughs> Which is good, because this ends at 2. Um, so I, I just lose all function. Um, you know, people can learn at any time they want. Um, it's worth mentioning, we do have a blog on the Diploma MSE website. We have a blog there um, called, um, I need to remember the name now, but it's, it's some of the lines of uh, how to be successful in online courses, how, how best to learn online. Um, do head over to that blog. Our wonderful brand manager, Rachel, is ready there with a video that we recently recorded 
on how uh, it's best to learn online. If you do want a link to that, just ask for the link in the chat and I'll, I'll hunt it down for you. Um, so that's really exciting. So uh, we've had a question here. Um, unfortunately, I can't mention your name specifically. Um, so, uh, so hi, I'm from Saudi Arabia, working at Novo Nordisk, Danish pharmaceutical company. Uh, I have a bachelor at pharmaceutical sciences, so I don't have any statistics background. Is there anything I can do to make it easier for me? So I think the question there is really, you know, I'm not sure that I'm going to, you know, this course is intensive. It's a postgraduate, mm -hmm. uh, postgraduate diploma in one year. Um, so, you know, how can I, how can they, what can they do before a course begins? How can they um, get themselves, prepare themselves ready for that course? Mm -hmm. And we've got someone here who works in pharmaceutical pharmaceutical sciences. Um, I'm gonna get my big words out today, I promise. Um, but they don't have a stats background. Um, it'd be interesting, um, I'm gonna have to say sir, because I can't mention your name. Do let us know what course you're interested in so we can give you specific advice on that. Um, but Meg, give us a, an overview. You know, yeah, of course. So I've, I've been accepted onto a course. Um, I've paid my deposit. Well, I mean, not me specifically, but you know, um, you know and I wanna, I wanna get ahead. I wanna make sure that when the course starts, you know, how can I make the course easier for me before I start? Oh, they're interested in applied health economics. So, so for this student, how can they prepare? What can they do? Um, of course, it differs from course to course. Um, but all of our students are put through our study skills week. Uh, this happens the week before the course actually starts. Each day is meant to introduce you to a different aspect of the course. So day one just eases you in straight away with a a good demo of the Moodle platform, how the course works, uh, sets you some basic tasks that help you to start clicking around and start navigating and gets you in there. So it starts off nice and easy. Um, and then as the week goes on, we touch each different topic. Um, our courses are designed so that you are not at a disadvantage. We know that our students come from, from lots of different backgrounds. Um, so they always give a base level. There's always, uh, reading lists and things you can touch upon that will give you the knowledge if, if you're already lacking it. Um, if you are ever feeling out of your depth when you're on the course, you can more than happy for you to contact us. We'll talk you through anything you might need to do, where you can find additional help. Um, and your tutors are always there to help you as well. Fantastic. Okay, brilliant. Thanks for that. So, uh, so to, to make reference to, to that student, we also have um, we also have a sister brand called Study PRN. Um, on there, we actually offer a lot of um, CPD and revision materials, um, some of which will apply to, to the courses you're about to take. So there are options there to do some learning beforehand as well. So that's called Study PRN if you want to look that up. Um, but again, if, if you, once you have been accepted and you paid your deposit, you know, if you want to get ahead, just contact uh, myself. You'll hear from me once you've been accepted, or you can contact Lindsay, our admissions department, we can speak to uh, to the head of the health economics course and just ask them. We'll ask them directly. If you want to be, if you want to speak yourself um, to the health economics uh, course leader, you can also do that. We can put you in touch with uh, with her, and you can um, ask them the best direction to prepare for the course. You know, just because the course hasn't started, you know, we do like Meg touched on there. We do have our study skills week, which will ease you into the course instead of you know just expecting you to be um, you know exceptional from day one. You will have that week to prepare. Um, but just because you know you, you're secured your place in the course now and it starts in September, it doesn't mean that you're not um, you know you're not one of our students. Um, so we're ready to help you. We're ready to offer you any materials you need. Um, so once you're accepted, you know, just, just get in contact and uh, we can do that no problem at all. So Meg, we're going to go through and do a Moodle demo. Are you ready? Uh, yeah. Cool. One moment, let's see if we can get this to work. There we go. We all good? Can we see? Absolutely. Lovely. Okay, so this is our Moodle platform. Um, sorry, just get this to click now. No problem. Okie dokie. Can I just check that you can see the whole window and how much can you see added? 
Uh, yep, the whole window's there. Um, I just want to uh, mention something real quickly. We've, we've just had some um, slightly rude comments uh, put into the chat. I do apologize if any of you have been offended uh, by some of the language, and we have removed that person uh, from the video. We won't let it kill the mood. We'll press on. <laughs> no at all. Yeah, Meg, I can hear you and see you guys. Let me know uh, if you guys can, can see uh, Meg's screen as well. So okay. um, I'll, let you, I'll let you pick the wheel. Okay, that's cool. Sorry, one second. No problem. Okay, so you can you see the uh, dashboard there? Yep, absolutely. And you can't see any of the other windows or? No, just the dashboard, which is great. Lovely, okay, okay. Um, so what we have here, is the dashboard. This is what um, the first thing you'll see when you log into the platform. So just on the left hand side, there's this slight menu here. You can see, um, obviously this is my account, so I'm not enrolled on any courses, um, but you'll see your enrolled courses here. This will include the module you're currently on, any modules you have been on in the past, as well as um, the library, instructions and resources, um, an area called the social forum, which is an area for people on the same course to talk to each other outside of the traditional context. Um, and just some other um, information area, the study skills week and stuff will all be there. Um, you can also have your profile, uh, see your grades and access your messages all in this, in this left hand menu. Um, so I'm just going to show you this course today. Um, so this is our, uh, an example of our endocrinology course. Um, a lot of our courses will be laid out in the exact same way, um, or at least the, the content will be similar. So like I said previously, all of our content is based entirely off of the learning platform. Um, the main teaching comes from something called the Academic Forum. So this here is the Academic Forum. Um, this will replace traditional lectures. You can kind of think of it as a bit of a virtual seminar. Um, many level seven courses will only work on seminars rather than lectures. And I know um, that many of you would expect like an online lecture, um, but this is the kind of the closest thing to an online seminar that we can get. Um, the idea behind it really is that your group's tutor um, will post this scenario in the module. Um, and they'll post a scenario about three times a week and these are to be replied to with a fully referenced and scientific answer okay so this is the academic forum you can see that it's split up week by week by what um what would be covered in that module so this is just kind of an example here of what you might see um, each module will start with like a welcome message from your tutor it will say something like this, tell them how they want to be contacted if you require assistance. So some of our tutors will give an email address, others will encourage you to contact using the Moodle platform, which I'll show you how to do later. Um, so then they'll post uh, sort of scenarios. So it will say something like this, it'll be an example of a situation that you might come across within your job. Um, and then it will have some follow-up questions. The idea is that you answer these follow-up questions and engage in a discussion with your peers. Um, like I said, this should be fully referenced scientific posts. Um, they're not meant to be particularly long, maybe sort of three to 500 words. Um, that's sort of what's expected. Just three of those a week really um, is what's expected. And if you want to do really well, an, an additional two would be appreciated. So it should be laid out like this. Um, and then with the references at the bottom. Um, we use a system called Turnitin, which just recognizes where you source that work from. Um, so it just sort of puts a hole on plagiarism and stuff. So that's our academic forum. Does anyone have any questions? Uh, let me just check our <laughs> chat box. I think so far we're good. I think it'd be interesting to talk more um, upon that. You mentioned there that it's you're responding specific clinical scenarios. Mm -hmm. um, so obviously some people will be you know, watching today and going, you know, how can you do, you know, like sports and exercise medicine would be, could be considered a very practical course. Yeah. Um, yes. Tell us about those clinical, like, you know, those the academic forum. Tell us about how, you know, how that 
kind of takes that practical experience and how it uses that? Mm -hmm, of course. So these are always linked to um, what each course is likely to see in their everyday practice. So for example, for something like cosmetic medicine, where it, um, it's slightly different than perhaps a hospital or sports and exercise medicine, like you mentioned, these are written by our course directors and by authors who work in that field. So they're um, completely aimed at people who are in that field as well. So like for cosmetic medicine, for example, it might say, um, might be discussing a particular type of injection um, and discussing muscle types within the face. Um, and these questions here, they'll be aimed at, um, again, at the people in the course um, and that particular audience. So they're never generic, they're not all medical. Um, health economics, for example, could be statistics based. Um, it all just varies course to course. Okay, fantastic, thank you. Do you mind if I, uh, I think we've had a question in mm -hmm. um, below. So, oh, I say that, no, nope, ignore me. Uh, Lindsay, has, <laughs> has, uh, Lindsay has responded to a question there, which is really helpful. Okay, okay. Um, yeah, if you guys do have questions that are not being answered on the video, do remember that we have our staff over on our Slack channel and in the chat. So your question will be answered, um, I assure you, no problem at all. Sorry, Mike, if you carry on. That's okay. So then we have a few other aspects of the module. These are the reflective journal, the module activity, and the end of module exam. So the reflective journal is a component that counts 10% of the module. Um, its aim is to make you reflect on what you've learned so far in that week. So it will have a look at what you've learned and how that will affect your practice moving forward. Um, this is kind of what you're looking at, and then it will be submitted each week. Um, for a total mark for the total of the six weeks. Okay. Um, the other thing is the module activity. So the module activity can be either a individual activity or a group report. Um, I know a group report may seem daunting over an online, um, an online course. However, like I said, our platform is very versatile. Um, although everyone's in a different time zone, similarly to how you'd contact us, there will be an area designated for you to contact each other about the course. Um, and you guys can contact each other in, in this forum that we provide for you to discuss the assignment and get the assignment done all together. Um, so there's no, um, you don't need to set at a certain time, you don't need to be involved at a certain time. Um, it's all just contribute in this platform whenever whenever you're available to. So hopefully that puts people's minds at ease. Um, so the individual assignments can be anything from an essay to a poster presentation, um, God's critical analysis of a source, um, loads of different things. And these are all completely up to date. So recently, um, almost all of our courses had their most recent module activity changed to a COVID-19 related module activity. So these are all completely up to date with exactly um, what you're facing in the field right now. Sorry, I wanted to a point on that. So I, do you know, I didn't know that. So I'm like, wow. <laughs> I'm, quite, I'm quite impressed by that. So Tom, am I right in saying that obviously uh, we find at some universities, you know, people might find, I know certainly at my course, I did a business course, you know, and mm -hmm. in the marketing modules, by the time we finish the course, you know, the whole marketing landscape has changed because technology is changing. Um, yeah. It's a crazy world out there. So these courses are updated quite, quite often then, are they? Mm -hmm. um, so all of the content for the next upcoming module will be reviewed in the two week break. Wow. Okay. So it is really that often per module. Yeah, <laughs> it's very, very recent. Um, so everything's completely brand new uh, right at the top of the field. Fantastic, okay lovely. Okay. I'll butt out again. <laughs> um, and then the final area is the end of module exam. Um, I appreciate this might be daunting as well. Um, it's a different type of exam than perhaps I've ever taken. I did a history degree. Um, I was used to writing essays for two hours <laughs> in, in a scary classroom. Um, this is a multiple choice exam with a single best answer. Um, so this is available just for the last week of the module. Um, it's open for 10 days and it's an hour long, so you can take 
the hour-long exam at any point within those 10 days when it's best for you to take that. Um, so there's a lot of flexibility there as well. You don't have to come at a certain time. Um, it, yeah, so it's completely flexible. So generally, like I said, they're an hour long. Um, they just vary from PG dip to MSc. They get slightly longer in the MSc level. Um, and generally, they're about 30 questions. Yeah. I think that's pretty much it. For, does anyone want to see? Oh, I'll tell you what I can show you. Um, up here, oops, I'm wiping my thing out of the way. This is a messaging system. So if you uh, wanted to talk to your tutor, for example, you're in the forum, you can see, you can click your tutor, view your tutor's profile, and message them directly there. So that's available for all your tutors and other students as well. Fantastic. I can see all your faces there on the right. Is that so? That's where. Ah, of course, yeah. Um, you know, so. Faces. I remember taking those pictures actually. You did, yeah. It's People hate a picture it. of me. <laughs> Um, yeah, so this is our student support team, just to make sure you can put a face to the name really. You'll receive a lot of emails from us um, quite regularly and it just means you can see what we look like. Have a lovely meal. Yeah, we might be online <laughs> but you can still see our faces, it's lovely. <laughs> exactly. Um, and we're available to message over the platform as well. So um, the same way that you'd message your tutor, you can, you can message us as well. Fantastic. So there's obviously there's so much support there, um, mm -hmm. which is fantastic. And it's lovely to see because, again, when people think online learning, they think, you know, corner of corner of their living room, um, you know, just just typing and, and writing away. But there's not only uh, it's really interesting to mention there is it's not only a student support team that are available to you, you know, five days a week. But there's also the tutors, aren't there as well? Yeah, they are. Uh, I'm ruining I'm ruining their time because they are coming up next. <laughs> Um, so I'm, I'm taking their airtime away from them, but uh, so, so I wanted to get in the mindset of a student. Okay, so some mm -hmm. of the, the guys attending today, um, welcome if you just joined. You are through to the Home MSC Open Day. We're here with a uh, a demo on our learning platform. So when these guys who just joined, you know, they may have seen this platform, Megan, and and thought, wow, you know, this might look a little bit complex for me. I'm not sure. You know, I'm I'm going to start the course, then things are going to be expected from me straight away. So if they get onto the online learning platform, it's all a bit mm -hmm. overwhelming. They need help. You know, what can they do? Um, so like I said earlier, the first thing that we do is a study skills orientation week. Um, and the very first day of that is a complete Moodle tour. So um, just before the module starts, a member of the student support team will record an entire Moodle tour um, of exactly how to navigate, where things are, where to find your course. Um, I think the last video for the last cohort was about 40 minutes long. Um, so it, it is in depth. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, although I've given you a quick sort of 10, 15 minutes and I clearly knew exactly where I was clicking. Um, I've been in this job for another year and a half now. I would hope <laughs> I knew what I was doing. Um, so that 40 minute video on the very first day, first thing in the morning, is there available to students straight away? Um, if you're still having issues after that, they can call us. Um, we're more than happy to sit on the phone. Um, I don't know if you guys have seen, but down here there's a schedule a call button. Um, you can schedule a call with a student support member um, in a set time. Also, we do get quite busy at the beginning of the course, um, so you might not get one straight away. But generally, within sort of two days, you can find one um, if you're fast, the same day, <laughs> um, and we will sit down and talk you through the platform if that's what you require. Fantastic. Okay, so there's a real one-to-one um, -one support team, which is lovely. Um, again, it's something. It's funny because I think people imagine, you know, you're on a you're on a campus course, you know, a, a physical course. You've turned up. You know, you need to know the right building to go to to find support. You need to know the right number and email address. But obviously, because we've got this all hosted on the learning platform, mm -hmm. it makes it that much easier. Um, yeah. Which is fantastic. And that that leads us on to a question we've had. Um, someone says, "Hi, Megan. Is this platform available whenever?" Um, so once you're on the course, yeah, from the, the first day that it opens, you have access to the platform um, from the Friday before the study skills week starts on Monday, right up until you've graduated, and then we allow you access to the platform for another year after that. Cool. Just throw in the extra year. <laughs> I love it. Okay, fantastic. Thank you so much. Really, really appreciate that. Um, 
that tour of Moodle. And like Megan said, you will have the opportunity during your induction week to get an even uh, deeper look into that, um, which is great. So if you have any questions, we're lucky to have Meg with us for the next five to 10 minutes. If you have any questions you want to ask the student support team, if you have any questions about how the course works, um, Megan's going to be your best person. If you have any questions about um, how you're, you know, you're treated as a, as a student here, uh, Meg is your person for that. Um, no problem at all. So I wanted to, I, I kind of enjoyed asking Lindsay this question because you know, we've got students here putting their own hard-earned cash um, into these courses, um, putting their money into their payment plans. You know, they're really committing themselves to this course. Let's talk about the end product. I love, I love talking about it because I remember I started working here in July um, and I had the, the absolute pleasure of them being able to just go to, I think, I, I think it was like weeks later I went to a, a graduation day and it was so fun. It was so hot. It was, um, it was it was boiling um i can't wear shorts like i am today because you can't see me. um so tell us you know you, you've been to some of these graduation days have you tell us a bit like what that's like you know for the people that have joined what what does that look like yeah of course so um all of our students will be invited to a actual graduation ceremony or whatever the link university is um, so the, the graduation ceremony you're discussing is University of South Wales graduation that happened in July. Um, but all, all of our like, universities um, have an actual graduation ceremony you can send. You can walk to stage, shake the hand, wear the robes, the lot. Um, all of these also have, um, so we did a sort of lunch, did a spread. Um, for all of our students, the students can come meet us, come meet some of their tutors, have a chat, um, we'll take loads of pictures for you, um, really it's just an enjoyable day. Um, if you can't access or come to the graduation ceremonies, um, your certificates will still be sent out to you as normal, you'll still get the official certificate sent by the university, um, but it's obviously lovely to meet you all if you can come. Yeah, we like, we like hanging out, we have a bit of a laugh, don't we? <laughs> um, it's good fun. The food's really good as well. Oh, <laughs> With these things, I always expect just to turn up and it'd just be a load of sausage rolls. Uh, <laughs> better than that, much better than that. Um, and it's worth mentioning we provide food for all dietary needs, um, mm -hmm. you know, uh, dietary or religious, otherwise. Um, worth mentioning. I'd like to speak to you all. Um, so we've had uh, people, we just said someone just said hi. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, I, like I said earlier, we can't mention specific names of course, this, this uh, is being recorded. Uh, so we want to keep your data nice and secure from now until you finish your course. Um, we're always careful about that kind of stuff. Um, so we just have one more question. Hi Megan, please, when will the link slash access to the library uh, be sent? Uh, yeah, so um, there are sort of two areas of this. So each university have that, has their own library access. Um, so that differs course to course depending on who, um, who gives the certificate at the end. Um, we have our own learner library, um, which was built, um, I think, last year. Um, just a completely online access course. It's in the Moodle platform. It's there for you ready. So as soon as you're on the Moodle platform, you can access the learner library. That's ready for you. Fantastic. So um, I was actually uh, a student of University of South Wales myself, and I remember um, having access to such a wide array of um, learning materials. It was incredible. Um, access 24 hours well we're gonna we'll be speaking in case you guys just joined us well we'll be joined by some of our alumni um at one o'clock who will be able to tell you more um about how that learning experience worked you know how they access those materials um i know that handsome who will be joining us uh, who is one of our diabetes graduates uh, will be particularly excited to tell you about his his learning experience you know he I don't, want, I don't want to spoil the story. Uh, I was like, good, spoil it for him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, don't spoil it. But, you know, he was in a very difficult position. He needed to go fast and he got it. That's what I'm going to say. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's like a, it's like a, um, like a movie trailer, which is, which is awesome. So, guys, keep your questions in. Uh, we've got Megan here for, how are we going to keep you hostage for? Five minutes, maybe? Something like that. Um, so, do keep your questions coming in. If you have just joined us, welcome. You are through the Diploma MSc. Uh, open day. Thank you for joining us. My name is Alid. I am your host. I am currently with uh, Megan from our student support team. Update you on what's coming up. Um, at midday, we have our talk to tutor session. Um, we'll have a quick break before that. So we have our talk to tutor session. You will be talking uh, to uh, two of our tutors. We've talked to Jacques Van Bleu from our sports and exercise medicine course, 
and Claire Holt from our leadership and a healthcare MBA as well, which started a couple of weeks ago. Um, and then at one o'clock, we'll have our Ask the Alumni session as well. So we had a message just come in. Thank you. I enjoyed your session. A little thumbs up and raise you there. Getting reviews. Getting reviews. <laughs> Oh, okay. So, um, so before you go, uh, mm -hmm. I want to get an idea. You know, a lot of people are, are becoming invested in this idea of online learning. Um, and as someone who, well, you've worked with him longer than I have, um, we just heard from Nick, who I like to say is the oracle of, uh, of online learning. Um, just, I, I mean, I've experienced the growth over the last year, but tell us, tell us a little bit more about, you know, how has the business grown over the last year or two? You know, uh, how many courses, you know, roughly have been added? What, what? You know, if people want to carry on learning this, and we, we do get people learning mm -hmm. this for, for a long time, right? Um, yeah. You know, how, how, what have you seen over the time you've worked? Um, so when I started, I was actually brought on as a temp. Um, and when I started, there was, oh God, 16 courses, I want to say, off the top of my head. Um, so that was February 20. 19. Um, since then, with each cohort, obviously cohorts run every six months, we've added at least two courses, um, generally each time. I know we've already got two more medical courses ready to go, as well as all of our MBAs that are, are coming up. Um, so I think a lot of courses are adding. It's really nice to see the growth of the company um, and, and know that the company cares about, about online education a lot as well. Um, the support team will entirely genuinely care about every single one of our students. Um, many I know by name on a first name basis. Um, I watch them come back course and course again, um, really. So sometimes they, they do a PhD dip with us. Um, they then don't go straight for the MSc, they do another PhD dip. They're, all, they're already raring to go. Something else. Um, some of our courses are quite closely related. So, for example, cosmetic medicine and dermatology. Um, could be in the same sort of field. Um, so you might see the students do both of those um, with us. Fantastic. Yeah, so it's, it's real. Do you know, I know we've had someone, I've heard someone who's completed, like, do, do you know the record of how many, someone who's completed like the most courses? Oh God. Um, sometimes it surprises me because I, uh, like I said, I've been here nearly a year and a half now. Um, and so sometimes I'll, I'll look for a student in the system and it'll have a list of the courses they've taken and I'm like, oh my God, <laughs> they, <laughs> they've, been, they've been with us since like 2017 and they're still here, still learning something new all the time. Yeah. Um, yeah. I wouldn't know what the record was, I'm afraid. <laughs> no, that's what I, I, I will remember. I think, I think Lindsay knows, she'll update me in a bit. Yeah. <laughs> take multiple courses and I think this is particularly poignant. Again, if you have joined us, we talked, touched upon um, you're probably hearing all about it in the news anyway, but you know, the current um, COVID-19 pandemic, the way that, what's, what I found so inspiring about Diploma MSc sort of from, from an outside look in, is the way that the business actually continued to grow um, despite, despite those challenges, because we know that on your online education is going to be the future. Um, and I think it's worth mentioning as well to, to students who, who are interested in the course, you know, it does mean that when you finish this course, it doesn't mean you just take the qualification and leave. You become someone who is now, you know, they're going to be so used to, um, to, to online learning that they're going to be someone who's almost like, like online proof, you know, for anything that comes in the future, whether it be online events or any further CPD that they do, um, they'll be, they'll be future proof, basically. That's the way I'll think yeah. future proof um, as an online learner. Um, I just had a message from Lindsay, five courses, and five courses is the is the record. So we've had a student take five courses. Oh wow! It's going to take. That's impressive. Kind of yeah. I love that. I'll complete them all. I think we <laughs> released two new courses. <laughs> um, <laughs> th oh, sorry. I think the other thing about that um, is once you've done the course with us, you now have um, relationships with lots of people in the same field as you from all over the world. Um, I know of a couple of students who have then set up a clinic together um, after the course, met on the course, um, and then set up a clinic. So once, once you've done a course with us, and you, you sort of entered the online world. There's a lot of networking opportunities for you there as well, um, which is excellent. Absolutely. So I was just thinking, um, yeah. 
um, so yeah, and I think that's that's the lovely thing about it is that um, despite people being from all over the place, um, and we're proud to have those people from from so many different countries, the sort of collaborations that we start to see. Um, we're going to ask uh, Jacques Van Blerk, who's up next, um, a little bit about that because he's he's now got contacts in the sports industry that he's made by doing the course. Mm -hmm. Some of our tutors have been within his network. Which is lovely. So there is sort of a community happening again, despite the fact that we're 100 percent online, um, which is great. So I'm going to let you go now. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, you guys attending. This is our first online open day, so we're all a bit nervous, fair to say. Um, but it seems to be going well so far. So thank you so much for your time, Meg. Really Thank you. Bye. Bye. There's always that fun radio silence when people are leaving a chat, isn't it? We get it in meetings at work all the time. So I want to say a massive welcome to some of you who have just joined. My name is Alec Nelms. I'm your host for today's online open day. We've just heard there from Megan from our student support team about how the course works. If you've just got here and gone, oh no, I wanted to ask you a question. It's okay. We have our dedicated Slack channel. So if you go onto the email where you've got access to this course, there are instructions on how to set that up. Um, and you can ask, there are channels for different parts of the business, admissions, support, tutors. Feel free to head on there and ask some questions. People are ready to help you. So this is an open day that stretches beyond just this mug. Uh, <laughs> it, is, it is study. So, um, so what we're going to take now, we're going to take a quick 10 minute break. Um, and we'll be back at midday with, hopefully, if they've dialed in, uh, two of our tutors, Jacques Van Blerk and Claire Holt. I'm so excited for you guys to meet these two. I've had the pleasure of working with them um, for the last year. Um, I've talked to them a lot and I've really enjoyed um, working with those guys. Uh, so to update you, Jacques Van Blerk is, uh, works on our, um, on our sports and exercise medicine course. Um, he's also been a student of Diploma MSc and then just rose through the ranks and is now managing that course, which is a wonderful story to hear. And you can hear all about that. Um, and then we've got Claire Holt, who uh, does our leadership course and our healthcare management MBA course as well, which we just released. Um, she's got an amazing story um, from flying planes to all sorts. Um, and she's born and bred Welsh, so can't help but uh, be a little bit uh, biased there. So we're going to take a, ten, uh, a quick 10 minute break now. Uh, I'm going to get my words back. I'm going to get some water as well. And um, so please don't go anywhere. We're about to hear from some of our amazing uh, so do come back. We will be back at 12 o'clock GMT midday. Thank you very much. Hey guys, welcome back. Um, if you've just dialed in, my name is Alid. I'm your host today, the Diploma MSc uh, online open day, very first one. Yes. Um, so far, so good as well. So uh, we're just going to take a couple more minutes. I'm going to make sure our hosts, um, no, I'm the host, uh, make sure our um, tutors got there. Our tutors are with us. Um, and then we will get started. We've got Claire. I can see Claire's here. Hi, Claire. I'm going to get you in a minute. <laughs> and Jack's here as well. Fantastic. Good to see you. Okay, so we'll just take one or two more minutes and then we will be speaking uh, to our, uh, our tutors, uh, course directors uh, today, uh, Claire Holt and Jacques Van Blerk. I'm so excited for you guys to meet them. Probably, I think if I was to make, you know, I'm just going to try and like boost their confidence now. I don't mean any of this, obviously. Um, <laughs> I think if I was to, uh, if I was to write like a top 20 sort of coolest people list, they'd probably both get a seat in there. We're just doing relatively cool things. So, they're really inspiring. And, and again, because we're an online university, it means we have online tutors. They're from around the world and they bring so much experience, but multi multidisciplinary experience to, to a group of, of, of students, or a group of you guys who are also from different parts of the world. And it becomes this sort of wonderful mix um, and sharing of, of knowledge and experience. So I am going to bring our tutors on now um, and they can tell you a bit more about that. Just to tell you what we've got coming up. We've had uh, Lindsay from Admissions and Meg from Student Support before. Uh, they did a wonderful job, so thanks so much to them. Uh, if you did miss them and you wanted to ask them a question, that's okay. If you log on to our Slack channel, the instructions are in the email you were sent this morning. Uh, you can go in there and ask them questions. Again, if you don't get through, it's okay. If you miss it today and the Slack closes, we are always available to answer questions. 
excuse me, my mid break is uh, repeating. Uh, so, and then to tell you what we've got coming up, so we're back to speak to two of our speakers, Dr. Van Blurk and Claire Holt. At one o'clock then, we'll be speaking to our alumni, two of our alumni uh, from different parts of the world who will be talking about their experiences on the course. Uh, Dr. Mazin Rashid and, and uh, Handsome Simbella. Really excited to speak to those guys. Um, we spoke to them earlier in the week about this and they're really raring to go. So uh, can't wait to see them again uh, after seeing them at graduation. So without further ado, Claire and Jacques, I'm coming after you. So I'm gonna, if you would give me 20 to 30 seconds, I'm just gonna bring uh, our tutors into the call. Claire's picture is the best. <laughs> Which picture I choose? Oh, I'll just pick the one of me flying a plane. It's cool. You got Jacques nervous. <laughs> <laughs> Hey guys, how are you doing? Good, thank hi, you. Hi, how are you? Too. How are you doing? Yeah, really good, really good. Really excited to have you with us. This is it's gone well so far. Nothing's broken. Oh. <laughs> Don't tempt fate, Alex. I know, I know. What did they say? Touch wood. Um, yeah, yeah. Really scary. Um, so really excited to have you guys with us. This is really cool. Um, and I can just see a lot of people have, have come into the to the group now. So you're in high demand. Look at that. <laughs> um, so what I will do is uh, just say uh, welcome to the people who have just joined us. You're through to the Diploma MSc Open Day, Digital Open Day, very first one, uh, and it's going well so far, so uh, which is brilliant. Um, my name is Alice. I am your host for the rest of the day, and we're about to speak to two of our wonderful uh, tutoring and course director staff, who are going to tell you a little bit about what they do, about their lives. Uh, we'll go too deep. Uh, you know, no hidden, no hidden secrets, um, and uh, and what they do for the course is really exciting. If you do have questions, there is a chat function below, um, and we can answer those for you. Um, no problem at all. I can see someone's asked anyone around from student support. Uh, if you head into our Slack channel, uh, Meg is waiting for you there um, in the student support channel, and they can help you. So let's talk tutors. Let's talk. Let's talk course. Um, so what we're going to start with, um, this is quite exciting because we've got two of you. I've had, it's been one-on-one -on -one so far. So, um, so let's start with Claire. So Claire, tell us a bit about your, your background, your experience, and how you sort of became um, you know, involved with, with the firm MSc. Yeah, so um, gosh, um, having worked in the hotel industry and customer services management, and then um, I had a brief spell in finance, my big main career to date before the world of academia was air traffic control, hence my picture with me with a headset on and I also have my private pilot license. I've um, been rather obsessed with aviation since I was a young age and the job of air traffic was a bit of a dream come true. Um, after about 10 years however, uh, I decided that maybe it wasn't for me for a few personal reasons, shift work, the long hours, so uh, night shifts and I know I'm talking to a lot of medics here are doing all of that so they completely, you know, I completely sympathise with that type of a lifestyle, it's hard work. But also I decided that I wanted to do something different so I embarked on a PhD. Um, my PhD I did at Warwick University, at Warwick Business School, uh, worked with the wonderful Professor Keith Grint, he was my supervisor and um, I did a PhD that focused on what we call relational leadership which covers all sorts of facets in line with leadership, especially collaborative leadership, which is a big word in, in healthcare at the moment. And uh, one of my big areas, which uh, became a big passion of mine from the aviation world, is looking at the um, blame cultures and how disengaging and damaging they are, and how to focus more on just culture. And um, from that, I have been working over the last 10 years with various NHS trusts here in the UK, along with Royal Colleges, and um, also um, other sort of organisations that do a lot of healthcare research like the King's Fund here in the UK. And I found myself, um, yes, becoming a bit of a person, call to person for work, things related to just culture, learning culture, patient safety, relational leadership, uh, change management. So along those sort of lines. Um, I joined the uh, team, um, the learner team, about, I think it's about coming up for just over a year ago, when I was approached and asked if I would help with the MSc in leadership and healthcare. 
of which, yes, I've been a big part of it. I've been, um, I've sourced authors, tutors, a lot of it, of course, I've sort of um, authored myself. And uh, so far to date, we've uh, had really, really good feedback on the content and it's going very, very well. Um, just another little thing about me before I let Jacques speak is um, if suddenly there is some barking, I have two dogs in my spare time. I'm a bit of, as well as flying, I'm a bit of a crazy dog lady. Um, and um, I have tried to arrange the house so they're quiet and they'll go to sleep. But if there is suddenly some barking for whatever reason, I apologize to everyone in advance. <laughs> it's just my dogs, Bentley and Biggles. Bentley and Biggles. Yeah, Bentley and Biggles. Biggles after the uh, World War II Spitfire pilot for those who know the storybooks. <laughs> Unbelievable. So uh, those are some strong. I mean, to be fair, we had um, uh, Lynn's. I think we had um, children's TV shows on in the background of Lynn's one. So you know, you're going to do well to beat that with dogs, I'm afraid. Uh, <laughs> but this is. I mean, this is the wonder of technology, isn't it? The fact that we can all be dialing in from our homes. I mean, we've got people attending today from United Arab Emirates. We've had people from the UAE. Uh, that's the same thing. Uh, <laughs> Saudi Arabia. I meant to say. Uh, Mauritius, we've had people dial in, so this is this is really exciting. So, Jacques, I mean, I've, I've been a fan of yours, to be honest, since I've worked here. You know, I'm, I'm going to come out a bit bit blushing uh, with your involvement in rugby and football um, in the sports that, that I love. So tell us a bit, I know you've got quite a unique story as well as someone who's actually learned with us. So tell us a bit about, uh, about yourself and, and how you came to, to, to be here today. Uh, yeah, all right. Thanks, Philip. Um, it's great joining you guys today. And um, I don't have any exciting stories like Claire from my history of um, I haven't jumped out of any planes or flown any planes, for that matter of fact. But um, uh, I do have a I do have an extensive history when it comes to um, allied healthcare professional uh, setup and also on the strength and conditioning side of things for professional sport. Um, I don't have any barking dogs here, but I might, you might hear some, some, um, heavy rain uh, that's pouring down in Cape Town where I'm based, um, at the moment. So I do apologize if you do hear, um, some heavy rain at the moment, which we are very, um, very grateful for. Um, my history, uh, as I said, I'm in a, <clears throat> I, um, I'm in a allied healthcare professional setup. So I ran my own private practice as a physical therapist um, and um, I've been doing that for the last 15 years. Um, and um, yeah, on the side, well, I don't know if you can call it on the side, but um, definitely a second full-time job was with regards to strength and conditioning for professional rugby uh, that I've been involved with for, um, yeah, it must be close to 10 years now. Um, sort of taken a bit of a backseat when Diploma MSc came on and I decided to further my studies about five years ago. Um, joined your team then in 2015 uh, where I first did my diploma in sports and exercise medicine and then uh, moved on to complete my, my master's uh, through, uh, through you guys. Um, I've been fortunate enough to, to actually attend two of the um, graduation ceremonies, which is fantastic um, in Cardiff there. And um, yeah, I, I sort of stayed on as a tutor then uh, since 2017. Um, I've tutored on, on various modules, um, primarily with sports and exercise medicine, but also with medical education. Um, and yeah, it's been an enlightening experience. And also, you know, I think, um, I think as a tutor, I, I keep learning from students. You know, you've mentioned uh, the worldwide audience that we have. And I think it's such a bonus. Um, we have got access to some fantastic uh, professionals um, in, the, in the healthcare setup. Um, who, who sign up as students. And, you know, um, I, I really go out with... Um, sort of learning as well while I'm tutoring. So yeah, it's been, it's been a very exciting um, journey with Diploma MSc for the last couple of years. Well, you, can't, you just can't get rid of us, can you? <laughs> no, no, I can't. So. <laughs> and you can't get rid of me, so. <laughs> well, there, that's true, as much as we want to. Um, <laughs> I love the fact we haven't had a question, we've just had someone say Cape Town is a very nice city. There you go. 
Um, yeah, it, it is a fantastic city. Uh, if you can get out of lockdown, then it's fantastic, you know. So, um, unfortunately, uh, along with the rest of the world, you know, we've been confined to our houses. Um, yeah, and um, I think this whole COVID-19 situation has just highlighted online learning once again, you know, and the importance that it, uh, the role that it will play uh, post-COVID-19, I think, is is definitely something that 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 everyone should consider you know so whether you've done online learning before or whether you you're completely new to it um it's it's very relevant in the times that we live in it does make yeah. a change for it to be raining heavily in cape town and for the sun to be shining beautifully here in the uk <laughs> yes not often that that happens so uh, <laughs> It's warm. You wouldn't believe. I, I I put on my just a full suit thing to start, and then I realised there's nothing. You can't see anything below, so I've just put shorts on. So, <laughs> well, I've, had, I've had to add a couple of layers to today, you know. So. <laughs> oh yeah, true, true, true. It's it's yeah, it's way too warm here now. I like the cold weather. I'm a bit of a weirdo. Uh, so we've had some questions in, so um, I'm going to kick off with those. I'm going to come to you, Claire, as a sort of course director and uh, someone who's now involved with our MBA courses as well, right? That's right. So cool. Um, so we've had a question, uh, what's the format of the classes? Uh, will, uh, will we be writing a thesis, a project? Um, let's start with that. There's a few questions there, so let's, let's start with that one. Okay, so it starts off um, really sort of as everybody on the level playing field is doing the postgraduate diploma, which consists of six modules. So all of the courses pretty much start off with those six core modules, I suppose you can say. So of course they dif differ depending on what course you're doing. But to use the um, MSc in uh, leadership and healthcare as an example, we very much cover sort of the leadership, leadership theory. We then uh, focus on looking at leadership in healthcare specifically. And um, it's an opportunity for students to share their thoughts online, critically uh, look at theories both academically as well as practitioner papers. I'm a big fan of bridging academic with practitioner and the real world. Um, so although yes, because this is an accredited course through the University of South Wales, you do have to meet the criteria of academic writing to a certain degree. However, a lot of it is reflective. Mm -hmm. Module two uh, very much looks at um, the well-being of people and the engagement of people in the environment. Module three, we build um, on looking at uh, clinical governance and patient safety, which of course is a huge thing with the World Health Organization and it's a big, big thing globally at the moment. Um, then module four, we look at the importance of career development and the importance of the roles of coaches and mentors in the workplace. Um, module five is looking at strategy, being strategic in leadership and uh, in healthcare specifically. And again, very much like the other modules, we do start off looking very theoretically, but then we very much do build on practitioner's side of work. And what is it like in your world where you work, your type of healthcare organisation? And then module six is then we finish with um, leadership and change. And again, specifically within the healthcare environment. So then for the masters on completion of the six modules and passing all the elements, you then are awarded your postgraduate diploma. For those that are then interested, you then move on to the masters. Now the masters consists of a seven week module of research methods where you very much cover anything and everything there is to do with how can you go about doing your research from some quantitative, mainly to qualitative interviews, how to analyze your data, so on and so forth. And then yes, there is a thesis. The, uh, the final point is where you then apply your research to a thesis. Now, I might need someone to remind me on the, in fact, Jacques might be able to remind me on the exact number of words required because it varies in working at other academic institutions as well. Um, some are 7,000, some are 8,000, some are 10,000, some are 12,000 words. So Jacques maybe can confirm with me how many words this dissertation is. Uh, yeah, that's uh, at the moment, Claire, that's at 10,500 and then right. it's got a 10% leeway either side. Yeah. You know, so. yeah. Yeah, so that's sort of in the middle of what other academic institutions expect for a master's as well. So that's very much the, the postgraduate diploma onto MSc. Fantastic. Okay, so um, that's really good to know. And I think um, the what's interesting about the MSc, which we find more and more students are going on to do after the, the PG dip, um, what's interesting about that is the track record we've had um, and the fact that we've actually had, I'm not sure what courses, um, we've have had students who have had their academic papers, their thesis is actually published, yeah. um, which is awesome. Yeah. 
um, which is great. So I'm going to check if we have any more questions. I think Linz has got back to someone talking about cosmetic medicine. Um, so we're going to ask some questions that we prepared, um, Blue Peter stuff. Um, so you guys are online tutors. This is this is different. This is different to anyone working in a bricks and mortar university. Um, Jack, I want to come back to you. So talking about that that um, that situation, how does that how does that work? How does what is the life of an online online tutor and can students expect something different to the traditional learning experience? How does that work? It's crazy, man. So, <laughs> no, I'm joking. <laughs> it's uh, horrific. Um, yeah. No, no, it's, it's, it's really um, a learning experience for everyone involved, as I said. Um, you know, the, uh, being an online tutor is very different to, um, to sitting in or, or lecturing in front of the class. Um, as you say, brick and mortar. Um, I think one of the main differences for me, um, obviously, is, is to, in, you know, you do a lot of guiding of uh, conversation on the online platform. Because we have people from all over the world, I'm looking at the, the map behind you there. You know, we obviously sit with um, massive time zone differences um, with students as far as New Zealand and um, also I currently have uh, in the United States a couple of students. Um, so it's trying to keep the, the, the academic conversation going without people um, sort of feeling that they're falling behind on conversation, you know, so that they still feel part of it. Um, I think that's a major skill that you need as an online tutor as opposed to just standing in front of a class of students where everyone is present and everyone is so, sort of hopefully dialed in. Um, and you also just have sort of that, that hour or two hour period that you have to be dialed in. Uh, when you're working online, you know, you have to keep track of, uh, of academic work and conversations taking place on the academic platform and make everyone feel welcome and inclusive you know so, or included so um so yeah that's probably one of the big differences that i found um in my lecturing experience i, I don't know if claire has anything to add on to that maybe yeah i think having been um you know teaching traditionally in an academic environment you know lecture theater style um i must admit i always thought i would prefer it being able to see the faces of individuals. However, one thing that I found is more beneficial on the online tutoring is how much better I get to know each individual student. I get to know them in a different way. I get to understand them in terms of how their learning is. And I can then actually, through their writing and through their reflective journals as well, I can actually direct and support them better with their understanding of things and their thinking and their critical thinking. A lot more so than you can do on an individual level when you've got 20, 40, 100, 200 students sitting in front of you. So I think there's an element of, um, I find although it's not face to face, I develop a much stronger relationship with the students to better understand them and support them through their learning. That's interesting. I mean, you wouldn't have thought with, with an online course that you'd get that you know that that one-to-one -one element but i think the course had been designed in a way to to support that yeah and it, it did shock me actually and it's something now when i recruit tutors or speak to tutors that come onto the course and and do other modules for me i do sort of say to them it's actually you know you will get a lot more from it and i think jock's already highlighted it's also the amount i've been learning from the students and that is something that i really really encourage them to learn from each other not just learn from me as their tutor, but learn from each other, but also to teach me mm. and to let me learn because I don't know, I've got students in, similarly to Jacques, like he said, all over the world, Cayman Islands, Middle East, uh, Zimbabwe, Ghana, Malta, they all have different ways that their healthcare systems work. And it is so interesting for all of us, for the students and us as tutors to understand how things are done differently, the different cultures, the different subcultures, the different regulations as well, especially, are very, very interesting. So I agree with Jacques, it's a constant learning experience for me, as well as what I'm hoping I'm giving to the students. Alada, I think I just want to add, sorry, while you're scanning for some more questions for us, mm -hmm. uh, just onto what Claire said there, I think what, what also building that personal relationship online is quite unique and and the way that um, the especially on the diploma side is is structured but also on the first module of your um, your MSc part 
is the feedback from from tutors that we give students on a weekly basis. You know, just um, we have a lot of students, especially now that that are starting fresh with uh, online learning, and they're not sure if they're on the right path. So as as tutors, we sort of really try and give that weekly feedback as part of the reflective journal. You know, you you sort of pick up on on academic writing through the week. You know, um, answers to questions on on posts. But you really, through the reflective journal, you get to to know the person behind those answers, and you um, can build a relationship through uh, reading their reflective writing and and commenting also and taking into account um, their day to day situation. You know, um, I had a lady who was pregnant now and gave birth during our last module that she completed. So, you know, you you have to um, show some empathy when it comes to that, and I think the 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 most tutors and also the course is, is very flexible when it comes to that and and accommodating so so yeah it's building that personal relationship as Claire said I, I actually find it um, a lot more intense is probably the word um, on the online platform than it would be in a class setup mm. yeah and, and come back in that uh, the reflective journal again it has been you know I do find it very very useful and. I always sort of say to my students that, you know, if you have got, you know, it's, it's difficult balancing a full time job with a family, especially if it's a young family, mm-hmm. and then adding in this whole new sort of way of learning and an online course that you want to sort of give it your all, but sometimes you're struggling. So again, through that, I'm very, very keen that if students are struggling with their time management, if you let us know as tutors, we can help you, we can give you little bits of advice, we can sort of maybe help you with that time management. And we are completely empathetic and understand that you have a life, mm. you know, and, and I think sometimes when I've been in actually within an academic institution, I have actually seen some, you know, students feel very much under pressure from the whole academic experience. Whereas I think this way, we try and be a lot more supportive. I think, I know I do. And I certainly, when I talk to tutors that are on the course that I've, I've, direct I, I do make sure that they're empathetic and understand um, who's got a difficult home life versus those that maybe have got a more difficult workload or maybe are a partner in a GP practice absolutely absolutely so it's interesting to get that to get that scope of the relationship you guys have with the students and it's pretty heartwarming for me as someone who's had a, a traditional sort of university experience so here, you know, again, as someone myself who may be interested in doing an MBA online at some point um, in my career, it's really interesting to hear how even doing an online course, you can have that relationship with the tutor, but actually you can almost have a, a stronger relationship with, with that tutor, which is, which is wonderful. And um, that leads me on to a, a question that we've had from someone who said, uh, so will the tutors be available when I am online as per my convenient time? So if I say, so how does that work, you know, goes with the, with, you know, like we said, different time zones, people in different countries, how does that relationship carry out? And, and what is, you know, what is that availability that they have with the tutors? Um, uh, Jacques, I'll, I'll go to you if that's okay. Um, yeah, I think, um, obviously, I, I think there is a bit of a delay. Otherwise, we'll have to have some really strong coffee for a long time, <laughs> you know, 24-7. Um, but what is what is very very nice about the way that this is structured, uh, Alad, is um, you know if I'm sitting in Cape Town, if someone is in in New Zealand or in the States, on either extreme east or extreme west side, you know when they do write their post um, and and they post it on the academic writing, it immediately f- uh, comes up on my side uh, showing that there is a new post. And who was the last person that posted it? So it almost draws my attention to that kind of that that um, new post immediately. So you know, whenever we wake up again on our side of the world um, and we check in as we sh- as we do on a daily basis, the the turnaround in terms of response uh, to that post or a comment on it or um, a, a direct message or sh- so is very quick. I must say, you know, I. For one, I know we all try and respond within 24 hours of, you know, a message that has been sent or a new post that has been posted. Mm. Um, but, but maybe on that is, uh, is also, I think, for people that are new to the online learning environment is not to have that perception of, I need to just communicate with my tutor. 
you know, you also, we, and as Claire already mentioned, I really encourage them to communicate amongst each other, you know. Um, so, so it's not just I have to interact with my tutor and I post an answer, is it right or wrong? There is no such thing as a wrong answer, you know. Mm. It's, it's about getting evidence. It's about researching the evidence. It's about posting the evidence and having discussion around it whether it's with your tutor or whether it's with fellow students, you know, um, I, I don't think you get another set up where, where I look at myself as an allied healthcare professional, where I have access to tap into the knowledge of orthopedic surgeons who are on the course with me, um, for free, basically, um, in any other, uh, in any other environment. So, so yes, it's, it's not a long answer to the question, but I think, you know, you can interact with anyone. So you don't have to sit around and wait just for your tutor to reply. You know, so. mm -hmm. I agree with that. And, and also as well, um, from my perspective, I mean, I obviously I've got other work as well. I uh, work for the academic institutions, which is great because I can bring a lot of learning from those into this. But um, that's why I try and plan my day. So when I'm tutoring, I do some in the morning and then I do some in the evening UK time. So what I'm trying to therefore do as well is try and capture in the morning those that are on maybe more of a Western time zone, those that are maybe in the States or in the Caribbean or South Americas. Whereas then in the evening, I tend to pick up the ones that are more East. So the Middle East, et cetera. So I'm trying my best, as, as Jacques said, we unfortunately can't be available 24 seven, but I certainly try and plan it that when I'm tutoring, I am available as much as I can. And, and yes, there is also the deep direct messaging and they always pop up. If I'm not logged on to Moodle for whatever reason at that time of day, they'll pop into my email. So I can always as well, if it's an important question, try and respond as soon as I can, as soon as I get that ping in my email inbox and look at it. So again, it's always within that sort of, as much as I can within that sort of 18 to 24 hour period. Fantastic. That's really good to hear. I think um, that's one of the, I think the benefits of, of sort of having the course hosted here in the UK. And I know that, that makes us in a similar time zone to South Africa, doesn't it? I think you guys are an hour, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah it's usually one hour or two hours difference. Yeah. So there we go. So we tend to find that, um, and, and we've had a question there, you know, we're coming all together from different time zones. Is UK time zone be the reference time? Considering attending classes, wishes of work, it is is the reference times that obviously we use here but like claire said because we're in the middle of the time zone there you know tutors are available in the mornings and the evenings which means that we tend to or they are able to dip into different time zones you get that answer as quick as possible as, as we do in aviation everything is utc or gmt so yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah any pilots will tell you they live their life on you pretty much british time zone <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's a, that's a huge thing. And obviously it's worth mentioning as well that we have tutors from around the world. Um, so even, you know, you've got, well, we're talking within very similar time zones here, but we do have tutors on multiple courses from all around the world, which means that maybe if one tutor, you know, is not communicating with you, maybe another one is. Um, and obviously you'll have different tutors for different modules. So whatever your experience, you know, it will change and will adapt um, to, you know, to your, to your, to your needs. Yeah. Thanks guys. So I'm uh, gonna move on to some more questions. So um, let's talk about, um, obviously we, Megan ran through some of the different, um, the ways in which the students are assessed earlier in our, in our Moodle demo. And I, I wanna pick up on that, um, on that, that uh, I think it's 10% of the assessment um, is that academic journal, isn't it? Um, the reflective <laughs> journal. The reflective journal, that's the one. Yeah, the academic journal is a much higher percentage than that because that's where a lot of the critical writing and learning takes place. Absolutely. So we've got the academic journal, um, which I believe I think is 40% of the grade, um, where you know those challenges, clinical scenarios are posed. I want to dig deeper into that um, reflective journal. You know, the place where people are picking their experience and um, their their learning. You know, the things that they've learned, the lessons they've learned, and the challenges they've overcome. Tell us more about, about that and uh, about how that influences the, the course, Claire, because I know we talked about it earlier in the week and it, you had a really um, interesting standpoint on, on how, what value that brings to the course. Yeah. So the reflective journal, I think it's something that we ask students to do at the end of every week and submit um, some reflection um, so on, on their learning of that week and how they feel. And for me, especially as the tutor in module one, where it's all very new for people, um, 
as a tutor, it first of all helps me understand people's anxieties. It's a place where it's private, just you and just the student and the tutor can see. It's not something that's shared with all your other uh, colleagues on the cohort. And it's a place where you, um, we do ask you to use a reflective model. Um, there are ones that are recommended through Moodle. So for example, the Gibbs reflective model is one of the ones. So we do ask you to have a bit of structure to your reflection and it helps your thinking, which is why it's important to use a reflective model to use that. But a part of it as well is coming back to that honesty of sharing any anxieties, so for some people, it's very, very interesting to read in those first couple of weeks, they're sort of, I've never done anything like this before, or I haven't studied since I was at school or since I left university 10 years ago. Um, others are very much a case of, I'm nervous that I won't be able to do it because I've just read some of them are, a, someone's a consultant, somebody else is a GP and I'm only a junior doctor or I'm just a, I just, I'm a nurse in a care home, you know. Mm. And as I always say to them, Actually, no, you're all in the same position here. There is anxieties in it and, and being shared by everybody. This online learning platform is new to all of you and all of you can learn from each other. And it's almost a case of forget about your role, forget about your job title. This is a place where you can learn, you can apply learning, you can ask questions of others to learn from others and to use it to your advantage. And I think the reflective journal from a tutor perspective is where then we can guide them and support them in appropriate ways. As the module builds on and the reflective journal uh, posts become a little bit more maybe orientated towards the course mm -hmm. rather than anxieties and their learning. The other thing that I like reading about is how students have actually felt confident to apply their learning into practice mm -hmm. and share how it went or how it didn't go so well or how it's helped them better understand another colleague from a different perspective. So maybe, for example, they had a colleague who has been a bit difficult, but from learning about something on the course, they've realized that actually that person isn't a difficult person. It's just the way they are. So it's, it's little things like that, that for me as a tutor are so refreshing and it's so important. It might only be 10 percent, but actually, if you look at it from your own growth perspective, it should actually be personally to a student a hell of a lot more because it can then be something you can look back on when you've completed the masters to think, oh my God, look at how I've developed myself. And for those countries that also ask, ask um, professionals to keep a continual professional diary, a CPD type approach, continual professional development, sorry, diary. Again, the reflective journal is something you can apply into that. You could potentially print it off, copy and paste it across, and you can use it for that type of thing as well, which is also hugely beneficial for students. Fantastic, fantastic. That's huge. I think what's interesting there is how, actually, I think you touched upon um, the sort of, the way that, you know, although it's 10%, it's massive for your own personal growth. That's interesting for me because I think it's important to emphasise that although this is an online course and the certificate you get is from, you know, recognised UK university, I think it's important to mention that I think if students are coming here just to get that certificate, you know, it's probably not the right course for them, is it? I think the kind of people that, that do well in these courses are the ones that, you know, they want the qualification to progress their career, of course, and, and they're going to get that. But, you know, this is, these are courses for people who want to challenge the, the medical industry, right, and, and, and change it and make it for the better, you know, which is particularly poignant at, at a time, you know, like this as well, right? Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. The, the one thing, um, and I can agree with, more with what Jay said there on the reflective journal, but you know what, what it is, is it's, it's on a Sunday night, you know, just making that cup of tea or coffee and sitting down and, and just um, in a quiet space if you can and, and, and see if you can transfer the knowledge that you've gained uh, through your research during the week. And asking yourself an honest question and see how can I apply this and how can it benefit my profession um, or my job application or if it's not applicable maybe to your specific work setting is how do you envision that being applied inside the healthcare system? You know? um, so I think we need to move away from where we read a textbook chapter, we try answer questions on it, and you either pass or fail it. You know, it's about reading um, material and uh, evidence-based research, reflecting on it, and seeing how you can transfer that knowledge into your day-to-day -day life. And I think um, people wanting to do this course, um, if you come with that kind of attitude, uh, this, is, this is really something that you will enjoy a lot. 
Fantastic, fantastic. So um, thanks guys, that was a, a really lovely response and I love the way this course or the courses that you guys work with um, and you know the over 21 courses that we have, I love the way we're building them into these things that become a matter of personal development as well as you know giving them a, a damn good qualification which is which is lovely so um before i ask a few more questions i just want to say we've, we've had a, about five six seven more people dial in uh to the open day so i just want to say welcome uh they've come to the right place <laughs> um so i'm alex I'm, I'm your host for today's open day the very first open day of Coma msc first of many uh, i think um i'm currently here uh for the next 15 minutes uh thank you uh, speaking to our, our leadership and healthcare course director, Claire Holt, and our tutor on sports and exercise medicine and medical education, which I mentioned, uh, Jacques Van Blerk. And um, we're getting really a really good insight into how the learning process works, which is, which is really exciting. Um, before I go to the next question, we, we had a question from someone. Um, can you provide me with some examples of the assignments, including the academic forum paper journal? Uh, we can provide you with examples of those, no problem at all. What I will do um, is I'll include, I'll pop the admissions email below um, and you can email them and they can provide you with things like case clusters. They can even provide you with an example of the certificate that you'll get at the end of the course as well. Um, I say that, Jodie has just done that for me. Oh, good colleagues, you, you just can't, you, you know, priceless. Um, so the email is down there um, and Lindsay would, would uh, be very helpful to help. Happy to help. Um, thanks, Jodie, appreciate that. Uh, just something on actually, sorry Alid, just something on the um, the sort of the scenarios and and certainly the way the course that I, I manage it's sort of built and the same with the assignments, the individual assignments and the group assignments is that I pretty much, the module starts as I said very much covering the academic work, the empirical based work, the research that's out there, looking at the more popular theories versus maybe some more modern and up-to-date papers that are out there have been written. But then as the module or as the weeks develop, the scenarios tend to be a lot more focused on how can you make, how does this work in your environment or apply it to your experience or can you reflect on a time when so what it is, is it's like, again, back to what Jacques was saying about how it's not just about being coming sort of academically minded. It is actually working about how these, this academic research can actually be applied into reality and help you in your day-to-day -day role. So, you know, especially with something like leadership, which is so subjective and so, so hugely written about, you know, I don't even want to go into how many books I think there's something like 400 new books on leadership written a day according to Amazon and it is so subjective and so different so it's working out what styles of leadership and what aspects of it are one applicable and relevant for healthcare but also what are applicable and relevant for you as a person so there's a huge amount there to go so and also the assignments the individual assignments the group assignments you know, some of them, they're not your typical write an essay and critically analyze this question or critically analyze this theory. What we try and do is do the assignments. So again, they're practically based. Mm -hmm. So a group one, for example, that we've recently done is prepare a presentation for the board of directors of a healthcare organization and put forward a proposal for something, blah, blah, blah. So again, it's something that if they're going to work towards a more senior position in a healthcare organization and they find themselves having to be able to influence the senior management team, influence more senior individuals in an organization. These type of exercises and assignments will one, demonstrate their academic understandings of the theories, critically evidence them, but also at the same time, think about how is this applicable in the workplace? Mm -hmm. So that I just wanna stress is something that I know these courses as well as the leadership one is very, very keen to ensure students can do. That's amazing. And again, it just goes back to the fact that this is, this is a qualification. This is something that in the workplace that we had a bark there. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> in the workplace, it's going to become incredible. The neighbor's cat got in the garden. Oh. <laughs> uh, Aled, um, you know, Claire, uh, Claire touched on an uh, interesting point there, um, the group and individual, um, uh, assignments that's also part of the course or, or the courses and um, when I first started the diploma and I saw that there was a, a group project I really I was like ah, how on earth is this going to work you know um, having now uh, explained uh, to everyone that we deal with people around the world how am I going to coordinate a group project 
And, um, you know, that's a very interesting thing because um, besides the academic work that you then have to put into the group project, you know, um, you, uh, you learning new skills that is very relevant in modern society is to coordinate on an internet mm -hmm. or on a, a web base um, how to coordinate a group project, you know. And um, so besides the, um, you know, the knowledge that you gain on the subject area, you're definitely learning new skills that is very relevant in our current society, you know, is how do I, um, how do I use modern technology, you know. Um, one of our individual assignments was to um, do a clinical assessment on the knee. So, you know, I had to go look at things like camera work, you know, um, uploading to YouTube, you know, a YouTube channel. Um, th those are maybe skills that um, for the millennials, or that's, that's something that comes second nature, you know, but we deal with people from all age groups. And so you actually learn new relevant skills that you can also practically apply then outside of just the academic setting, you know, which mm -hmm. I thought, found very interesting. And um, once again, I think relevant is or relevance is the key word here. And in current society, we want to, I think we want to eventually produce students that can go out into the job market and have skills that will allow them to be, become employed, you know. So, um, so yeah, maybe just a different sort of um, aspect to consider is that you'll learn new skills besides just the academic knowledge that you'll gain. So. I absolutely agree with you on that, Jock. It's very true. That's awesome. That's awesome. I do think the, the added value to the course is really becoming apparent. I love the fact it can all happen online. I think that's the, that's the pinnacle of this, is the fact it could all happen from, you know, your computer, wherever you are in the world, um, you know, with your family around you. And, and I love that. I love that you can get that value. So we've got about, uh, about 10 minutes left um, before we unfortunately have to say goodbye to you guys and uh, speak to some of our um, alumni coming up. So we will have, be speaking to our alumni for the final hour uh, at one o'clock, which I'm particularly excited to talk about. Um, and actually with that in mind, um, I wanted to ask sort of both individually um, to sort of give us an example. We've talked a lot about the course, but I want to talk more about um, you know the kind of the kind of then medical practitioners we produce after these courses. You know what kind of people do they become. You know we we'll get that insight for the alumni, but I'm interested to get from from, from you sort of one each. Um, maybe uh, you know a student success story or a success story you've had from a student and and where they've gone on. You know without obviously mentioning specific names, but where they where they've gone on to to go after the course. Um, I'll do this by whoever wants to start. Hands up. <laughs> I don't mind. I've got a couple actually that. Um, I think for me, the mix of students so far, I mean, in terms of where they've gone to, I can't say that yet because the leadership in healthcare, it's a new course. So they're only just finishing module five and about to start module six. But what I can say is that we've got students from all over the world and they are ranging from um, recently, qualified, recently graduated nurses We've got, um, uh, we've got dentists, we've got um, paramedics, mm. uh, we've got junior doctors, um, we've got GPs or family care doctors, we've got people that are working for charitable healthcare organisations in other countries, for example, Mary Stopes. Um, and we've also got um, somebody who's just recently been made um, a regional director for Public Health England. So, you know, we're sort of going from very junior nurses all the way up to directors of some sort of very big public bodies. Mm. And it's great. I'm really, really pleased with the mix. And as much as at the start of the modules, we sort of ask them to introduce themselves, not just to each other, but to us as tutors. You know, I do then remind people that, you know, you're going to learn off each other. So somebody who may be a consultant is suddenly going to remember what it's like to be a junior again or be a junior nurse. And, and it's an opportunity for everybody to learn from each other. Um, in terms of successes, I mean, already um, one of my junior doctors who's based in an NHS trust here in the UK, she's already been accepted for a new senior role, which she applied for. She did in a reflective journal, she didn't think she'd get it, and she did. And she's also been awarded junior doctor of the year in her trust. Um, the paramedic, Again, she um, wanted to go for a senior paramedic role, didn't feel she could, was doing this course to apply, 
through the reflective journal, I just gave her a little gentle push and said, well, apply now so you can understand the process. If you don't get it, try again in 12, 18 months. She applied and she got it. Um, <laughs> you know, it's little things like that. There's also um, a, a social care worker. She's a nurse working in a care home. And she was really, really struggling with how to communicate with her management team. So again, through the learning on the course, it's provided her with the, what she described as the right language to use to be able to persuade them into going in a particular direction. Mm. So those are just a few tiny little examples. As I said, I can't say how they've achieved after the course, but they're achieving during the course, which <laughs> is obviously really, really pleasing me. It's, it's great to read and, and it's, it's really, really enlightening. So. I love that. I love that. During the course, I didn't expect that. I even put <laughs> after the course because I just thought, well, surely that's going to happen during the course. That's amazing. That's amazing. Um, so, Sean, sure, well, what about you? you? You know, have you had what sort of stories have you got? I know that you've you've not only obviously, like we said, been a student, but you're now um, a tutor. So you've, you've worked alongside people as well. Um, I'm leading you on here to talk about specific people, but go for it. Um, yeah, and let let me start with one of uh, one of my students who, who used um, the diploma MSc and, and and he continued to do his masters um, as part of his application for a senior strength and conditioning coach in Premiership Rugby in the UK. Um, so they were looking um, for an internationally recognised qualification, you know, um, which. Um, which uh, Diploma MSc then provided, you know. So, um, so I think he, he, I wouldn't say he got the job just based on that, but it played a big role in it. Mm. Um, you know, he was in his interview he was specifically quizzed about um, uh, the uh, diploma and the masters, which he'd done through South Wales. So, um, so it must have drawn some attention. So that was one success story. Um, another one of my master's students managed to publish his paper um, uh, and uh, also use it directly in his professional sport setup. He's, he's a football coach. Uh, so I think that that was something nice. Um, we had uh, one of our students uh, use it as part of her application to become a junior lecturer. Um, so she continued as, as part of uh, in the academic world. And... Um, I think also um, another, maybe a more a, a example closer to home would be that um, we've got students who, after having completed their masters, stay on with Diploma MSc, you know, and become tutors. And that's an, another employment opportunity, you know, is to, to work in the online education industry. So um, I, I've personally had two of my students who've stayed on um, and also become tutors alongside me, you know. So um, I, I think this, the, the success stories are just going to grow, you know, but that, mm. that's just a few of the um, small examples that I can use where uh, the qualification didn't just add to the knowledge, but it actually meant something professionally for them as well. Mm. absolutely that's amazing i think it, it really hit me personally when um it was the first graduation where we met and um you talked about the specific uh person you mentioned there who now works in premiership rugby i think it hit me when i was having a discussion with him you know to, we're just talking rugby as we always do um and the fact that I, you know I, I was talking about my favorite welsh rugby players and uh and he'd come back and go yeah like he's a really nice bloke and he'd talk about them like he you know like he's their bloody neighbor um, yeah. And I just loved that, and it was just a testament to. And like you said, you know, you know, it's going to be in multiple things for a lot of people. It's like, and I know Claire, you'll agree with this. It's the mindset that gets people to to these kind of positions. We know that it's more than just the course. Um, yeah. The course has a, a has a place to play in that, which is um, which is amazing. So some of those success stories uh, it's going to be amazing. I know if if uh, Steve, our, our founding director, is watching, he'll probably have a tear in his eye right now. <laughs> right, so those success stories. Oh, which is fantastic. So we've had a couple of questions. I know Jody has replied to a couple of them um, specifically. We had a question, um, will the study materials or books be provided to us? Uh, we will be provided with books. Um, from what I understand, these students have access to an online library, don't they? So everything's provided in the course. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I think, um, <clears throat> you know, prior to starting the course, um, most students are encouraged that all the learning material or background reading is provided, you know, so it's already sort of sorted for you, mm. uh, which is quite nice. 
um, you don't have to go find a lot of it, you know, so, and, and use that then to build on, and as you say, the university's online library, find it is available, mm. uh, which is a massive resource. Um, I mean, what you can't find there, I don't think you'll find anywhere else in the world, you know, mm. so, um, so uh, once again, it's not going to buy textbooks and um, additional financial costs that you'll have to incur to get learning material. Um, it is provided, and if it's not provided, you will find it on find it the, the, the uh, online library. So real no additional cost. And I want, one of the massive benefits of online learning is that you, you know your 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 overhead costs is very little. So if you can put it that way. Well, I'm um, just back to that cost as well. It sort of diverts away from that question a little bit, but um, I just wanted to sort of mention the MBA that um, is launching next September because, you know, MBAs are huge. There are a lot of hard work and some of them, even online ones are very expensive and it has sort of um, become quite an elite type of subject. And unless you've got an organization with a huge bank balance that can help fund you do an MBA, they're quite expensive. And this MBA that um, is being set up is one affordable, but also two, it's going to be hugely accessible for lots of people and it consists of the six sort of core modules um, which are covered in practically every MBA program that I've ever been involved in so mm -hmm. things like um, organizational behavior operations management strategy finance marketing however you can then if you wish to keep it as an exec MBA or you can specialize your MBA and this is quite a unique thing that isn't been done in many places or many academic institutions at the moment and for healthcare, there is one which is going to be MBA in healthcare management. And then what will happen is after your six modules, you will then do two elective modules of which uh, one is going to be along clinical governance and patient safety. And another one will be leadership and change in healthcare systems. Mm. Um, and then the ninth module will be your research methods, which will then be followed by your research dissertation. So it's going to be a hugely, and it's, it can also be done in 18 months rather than some MBA programs can take you sort of two, three, four years even, depending if you do the full-time or part-time. And again, it's got that online flexibility. You fit it in around your life, your professional work, your family, your interests. So it's something that's certainly going to be accessible uh, for all. Um, and then just back to the materials, the books and the papers, um, something that we do do especially and is starting to be rolled out across all the courses is very much we have the references that are in each week's discussions we then are now having sort of a section for essential reading so these are readings that as tutors or as course directors and as as authors of this course we mm -hmm. feel are certainly relevant and at the forefront and need to be seriously considered however we are doing something called further reading for people so if they have got more time or are very, very interested in a particular subject, they can actually then look at the further reading and go and do some further reading. And if it's not available through the library, which is highly unlikely, but if it is a book, the other thing I remind people is if you go on to Google Books, Amazon Books, there's quite a lot of them that you can now buy. These books have been used before, used ones for only a couple of pounds or a couple of dollars. They're not very expensive. And don't be afraid of buying some of these secondhand ones, especially if it's a subject that you're really passionate about and are thinking about doing your dissertation in. Fantastic. OK, thank you so much, guys. I wish I wish we had more time. I wish I could create more time in the day for speaking to you guys some more. But um, it's been incredibly insightful. And um, I think this past hour actually for me has been really it's made me feel you know, even more connected to, to Diploma MSc and the way we run courses. Um, and the way it's it's become something that develops you um, in your life and that personal development it just it's, it's almost overwhelming the fact that we can do that online is is fantastic so um, before we move on I just wanted to answer uh, some specific questions I know we've got people asking for specific tutors um, we're hugely lucky to have Jacques and Claire with us today I understand that you know we do have over 21 courses available so I know you guys want to speak to specific uh, people a lot of what has been said today uh, does apply to the other courses as well um, and the fact that they're designed to be 100% flexible um, they're designed to have like we said the reflective journal academic journal they apply to, to a lot of the courses um, someone asked really quick um, could people connect on their own time uh, since there's a six hour difference so 
as we talked about this earlier, but of course, um, something worth mentioning before you do go um, is that obviously the courses, like like Claire mentioned there, the flexibility, the flexibility um, is is 24 hours. So it means that anyone from any part of the world can succeed at these courses. Um, even if it's a case of like like Claire does, you know, answers questions in the morning, answers questions in the evening, um, you know, checking throughout the day. We have tutors from around the world as well to help, you know, to deal with that time difference. And we have a student support team available um, from nine to five here, which usually interacts with the time zones as well. So if you are six hours difference, we can absolutely accommodate um, for you. Uh, no problem at all. But look, guys, this has been lovely. It's been so nice. And thank you so much for your time. I appreciate your coming here, offering back a uh, particularly uh, very weird and, and crazy time. We've had someone say, thanks, guys. The session has helped in preparing me for what to expect. So. They say it better than I do. <laughs> okay, have a lovely day, everyone. Thanks for having us. Thanks for having us. Cheers. Thank you. So much, Great work, Alad. Bye bye. <laughs> cheers, Stop cheers, okay. cheers, cheers, guys. Bye bye. There we go. It's that, there's that radio science again, isn't there? Um, oh, that was absolutely fantastic. I think, um, like you said, there's a real testament to there that these courses are are here for um for your personal development as well as giving you that all important certificate at the end to show to your employer some of those student stories as well about how students have progressed is absolutely heartwarming and actually very inspiring for someone like myself and i know some of my colleagues you know there are so many ambitious people not only on the courses but work in the business as well and we find you guys so inspiring especially at a time like this you know during the current pandemic you really are our heroes um in the medical industry and um uh, and we've seen it seen it everywhere so that's fantastic so uh, thank you for all your lovely comments someone said thank you for answering my questions no problem at all if you do have any more if you do have questions for specific course courses or course tutors um we don't want to leave you out um please do contact our admissions email it's admissions at diploma-msc.com um, we'll put it in the chat box below please do contact admissions and if you have any questions specific to the tutors we can pass those on and get those answered for you there's no there's no question that will go unanswered here you guys are putting your time your effort your blood sweat and tears into these courses and we're about to hear from some of our fantastic alumni about what that experience is like um, and it means that when you go into these courses it is imperative to us that you guys are as, as confident and worry-free as possible before you start um, this course uh, so every I can't stress more that every question will be answered um, for you so so thank you to Claire and Jack for joining us um, what fantastic people to have um, in this community so we are very close to our final session of the day we will be speaking to two of our wonderful alumni uh, handsome and Dr Mazen Rashid very excited to speak with those guys they are ready and waiting uh, in the wings but we're going to have uh, I appreciate it's one o'clock now but we're going to take a few minutes just have a break um, I need more water again it is so hot here in the UK which is lovely to say for once um, here, in, here in Jackson is grateful for the rain unbelievable um, but look so we're going to take a few minutes break um, let's return at five past one uh, where I will have um, our alumni join us and I'm so excited for that so do get your questions ready if you have just joined us, welcome. You are through to Diploma MSc Online Open Day, and it's wonderful to have you with us. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, so yeah, get your questions ready, and we shall return in about six minutes. Thank you very much. So welcome back, guys. So so good to have you with us, and thank you for sticking around. I appreciate that break was a little bit shorter than than advertised, but uh, I just you know when you just get speaking to people and you you want to. I want to get all those amazing stories out of them and I think we heard that back then um, with our tutors which was fantastic if you did miss that um, we are recording this session so we'll be able to release those segments uh, separately so you can hear all that again um, I think it's safe to say we'll, we'll be looking to do more uh, open days as time progresses as well so there'll be chances to speak to different tutors different alumni different members of staff as well because there's a lot of people behind that behind that online uh, behind the online screen and uh, they're doing fantastic things like we heard so speaking of those people i am very excited i'm always excited to speak to anyone um uh, when you when you're on lockdown at home it's exciting to speak to anyone who isn't you know your mum uh no offense mum. uh so we're going to now hear from our um, our alumni if you have just joined us welcome i should say that bit first you are through the diploma msc online open day first of many i hope um 
it's wonderful to have you with us from all parts, different parts of the world. If you do have any questions, please, please, I'll get my words right, please pop them in the chat function down below and we will ask them to our, our live guests here. Um, also, another thing we're doing, if you want to test out the chat function, let us know where you're from, okay? We'd love to hear about where you're from in the world, um, which country, don't worry, don't, you don't have to put your address on there. That <laughs> I mean, probably wouldn't be very, uh, very good. But uh, please let us know which country you're dialing in from. Uh, to put it in perspective, I and a lot of the team are currently yeah, in this tiny little spot. Um, we're proud to say we have students from all over the place, um, which is wonderful. And this is what the, the power of online learning can give us, which is fantastic. But I know you guys have been excited to meet these guys. Um, I had the pleasure of meeting them both at our graduation ceremony. So if you give me 20 to 30 seconds, we are going to be joined by Mazen Rashid and Mr. Hansom. I apologise if you just heard a weird car horn. A jet ski also came by earlier. We've never had jet skis here. So, Dr. Rashid, here he is. Um, okay, guys, so I've just invited you to be panellists, so you should uh, be able to hopefully unmute and, um, and show us your wonderful faces. Hi. Here he is. Hey, Dr. Rashid, how are you? I'm very fine. Thank you very much. I'm happy to join you today, this uh, opening digital day. And I wish you good luck and success, and you'll do great. Thank you very much. Oh, you're full of compliments. You're such a charmer. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I hope you are doing great. And the situation is safe there in UK. And yeah. uh, all the members of your family are doing great. Thank you. Oh, thank you. I really, really appreciate that. Yeah, it's, um, it's an extraordinary time, isn't it, for, for people to be pulling together. Um, and it, it's it's really it's really wonderful to see. So I want to see you as well. You're in you're in HD there. You've got very good quality video. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you very much. Uh, you know, nowadays it's very sensitive. Uh, all the world uh, is passing through very sensitive time. The COVID nineteen yeah. and the curfew conditions and with the all restrictions of movement. And uh, also, we have to face the patient and try to give them the best care that they need. And uh, wish us good luck. Thank you very much. Uh, so, uh, just I would like to say that uh, this uh, sensitive time is calling us all to upgrade our knowledge and to increase our capacity for uh, information. And. Uh, all the people now are running fastly to know the vaccine for this COVID-19 pandemic. So I hope by the end uh, of uh, this month or re before than that, we can reach that soon as uh, much as we can. So uh, I also want to attribute my speech to my professors and doctors and to uh, my own and lovely country, uh, Sudan and uh, for all my friends there and my colleagues they are listening to me right now uh, i'm very happy to join you today uh, and all to the uh, martyrs of the uh, revolution in sudan and those people who passed last year and wish them that they are in heaven inshallah and uh, i would also to uh, wish uh, um, thanks to my professors, Professor Abdul Latif Gasmallah, Dr. Khidra Tayyib, Dr. Ima Salah, and uh, Professor Steve Davies, Professor uh, Simon uh, and Wallace, and uh, Dr. Uh, 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 Ruth Davies also, and uh, Dr. Ramzi Sabit, and Dr. Um, Anil Kumar right now for the acute medicine. Uh, all the thanks and appreciation for they are doing their best and uh, giving us this chance to upgrade our knowledge in respiratory medicine and acute medicine. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, so just a brief introduction for everybody. My name is Dr. Mazar Rashid. I'm, uh, I finished my MSc in respiratory medicine with Diploma MSc at University of South Wales. I was lucky to meet Mr. Alit and uh, all the student support team in the graduation ceremony. And uh, I'm doing right now my clinical MD in respiratory medicine. Uh, also, 
uh, here in Saudi Arabia, also facing patients of COVID-19, asthma, COPD, uh, working also with the one of uh, nice places in Aramco facilities. And, uh, thank you very much for joining uh, uh, you today. I'm very glad to join you. So, uh, what's up? <laughs> what an introduction. Thank you so much. You remember the names well as well. I, I don't think I can remember that, that list of names. And uh, it's a real statement to... Um, for how many people you know have, have collaborated, collaborated, and come together um, to produce you know the alumni that we have, um, like yourself, Dr. Steve. So thank you so much, and um, what a, what a past there, and what a history as well of of like you said things down there in Sudan and and things like that. It's so wonderful that despite you know pandemics and and these sort of global global issues, um, we're still able to come together you know on the on the online waves and and celebrate knowledge, celebrate progression celebrate um, good health you know uh, I think it, it comes down to all that and that is wonderful so thank you and it's great to have you with us uh, and I'm going to also welcome our other guest uh, Handsome um, Ballet lovely to have you with us Handsome how are you? Oh, thanks thank you so much Ali um, I'm very well thank you um, I want to say hi to everybody all the prospective students um, and I'm um, doing very well thanks South African weather is keeping me up <laughs> Uh, it's good weather in Durban, um, and yeah, I'm enjoying it. Uh, so to just introduce myself as well, my name is Handsome. I am a diabetes educator. I uh, completed my uh, MSc in 2019. Um, of course, I started with a postgraduate diploma um, in diabetes uh, in 2017, 2018. And then 2018, 2019, I then uh, completed my MSc in diabetes. So I'm um, very grateful for the opportunity that I received. Um, it was great, really, really good working ex uh, learning experience with the Diploma MSc and the University of South Wales. Um, currently, because of the, um, the exposure that I received when I was doing my uh, uh, postgraduate degree, I am now uh, a diabetes educator. I uh, basically educate patients, I manage patients, on um, behalf of the doctors, on behalf of endocrinologists, physicians, uh, general practitioners. I'm also in the process of uh, doing my PhD um, in the University of Brazil Natal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, and the PhD is looking into, um, you know, um, respiratory biomarkers for patients who are diabetic, um, obviously, um, uh, especially in the COVID-19 situation. So it's, it's a really, really good uh, um, uh, uh, step in the right direction for me. I'm really glad. Thank you so much, Alid. No, yeah. my, well, my pleasure. It's, I remember um, it, it does bring a tear to because I remember when we, we filmed your, your interview uh, back during the graduation. So I, I met Dr. Rashid uh, almost a year ago now at, at the graduation in summer. And then I met yourself, Handsome, in, in winter. And I remember you saying, um, I remember you saying on the actual interview itself, which people can see, you know, you're saying, you're there saying, you know, I got my diploma, I got MSc, and and I remember you tugging on a jacket, you went, I'm thinking PhD, like this, and now there you are, you're, you know, you're doing that, which is um, which is lovely, and I love to see that progression. Um, I don't know if we had the choice, you're doing a PhD with us, but uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, we'll yeah. be looking into that. So thank you so much for for joining us, and I want to be clear to everyone attending, if you do have questions um, for our guest alumni, you know, these are two very busy guys, uh, very inspiring guys and, and leaders in their, in their industries. So if you do have questions for these guys, please do pop them in the chat box below and we'll do our best to answer them. Um, and uh, like we said, we have our Slack channel as well where you can uh, ask these guys questions. So the big question really, you know, we're coming from different countries, you know, we're coming from all over the place. You guys had the option of studying at a university. I know handsome, some of your friends and colleagues did. Um, Dr. Rashid, I want to come to you first. Why, why online learning? You know, you had the option to do to go to a university, to attend a university physically, but why did you pick online learning? Actually, uh, I have a very full. Uh, uh, I have uh, commitments to do a job and, uh, and a college. That's why I need to uh, uh, also upgrade my informations. Uh, besides that, so. Uh, 
also, um, you know, respiratory medicine, we have every day updated information. Uh, as you see now, this COVID-19, uh, still uh, they are, uh, everyone is curious about what is the uh, situation will be, what is the management will be. And uh, also online study is give you convenient and uh, flexible scheduling and uh, you can uh, uh, access the uh, online learning at any time you want. And uh, with a plenty of information and uh, tutors, they are available most of the time to answer you directly with an update information and uh, give you flexible schedule, flexible environment. You can come and access at any time. And this is very important uh, in these days uh, is to have uh, an update information. Not only that, uh, you, if you just go with the studying online, you will also uh, lowering the cost uh, if you are uh, not on the campus like uh, paying uh, too much. Uh, so uh, it's also cost containment for that reason. And it's also improving the self-discipline that you have commitments to finish every week. Uh, you have to do weekly portfolio. Uh, as um, our friend, uh, colleague uh, Megan said, that we have uh, weekly commitments and uh, we have uh, at the end of the course exams and uh, that's why it gives you the, 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 the importance uh, of uh, uh, continuing learning. That's why, and uh, so, so it's very, very useful experience, very useful experience, and I really, I did not regret about it at all. Well, that's good to hear. <laughs> that's, that's the important thing, isn't it? But yeah, like you said, it, you know, having that flexibility to, to hand in assignments when it was convenient to you, to work on those um, as well is, is fantastic. I wanted to point out, I love uh, that you've got your graduation photo in the background. I did not notice this. Uh, and Jody just pointed out to me on a, on a private message. I love that. That's wonderful. Can we get a close Thank up of the picture? Can we, can we see that? Yes, yes, of course you can. Really? One year ago. Yes. God, that smile could melt an iceberg, couldn't it? Beautiful. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> Fantastic. So, uh, Hanson, if I could ask you the same question, obviously coming from a different part of the world, coming from a different industry as well, and coming from, from someone who works as an educator, um, why did you pick online learning? What, what, what was it that, that made that decision for you? You know, um, um, again, just to iterate what uh, Dr. Rashid has said as well, you know, the flexibility that comes with online learning, it's, it's, it's a beautiful um, uh, space, you know, to be in. It's really is phenomenal. I mean, looking at somebody like myself, um, I was able to wake up at perhaps 4 a.m. in the morning and uh, do my online learning. Uh, by the time it hits 6, 6.30, 7 a.m., I'm prepared to go to work and do my 9 to 5, hour, uh, 5 uh, p.m. shift. And uh, once I'm done with that, I can go and, you know, do my gym session. And for that hour, come back home, have family time. And so basically, I'm able to, you know, plan my day accordingly at my, at my pace uh, without actually pressurizing myself or going um, uh, out of the bound, bounds of my personal or personality. Um, where else, if you look at perhaps, a you know, going into a, a lecture, like I, I was sharing with you the other day, you know, uh, you go to the lecture or you go to work first thing in the morning, you come back, you're tired because you're not a morning person like I am. I mean, I'm, I'm a morning person like, you know, so I'm not an evening person. Um, and then I, I have to go to a lecture and uh, I'm not able to concentrate. I'm not able to be productive. Uh, and that will then have a big impact, you know, in terms of my contribution towards my, my work, you know, my school work. So that's why online learning for me, uh, it does it. Um, and, uh, you know, added on top of that, to think that it is the way to go. It's the next best thing to the next industrial revolution, which is happening at the moment. Um, you know, um, if you're looking around you, most of the uh, places now, they are struggling. I mean, you know, universities, especially in my own country, uh, COVID with the impact of COVID-19, they've had to actually do online learning. and um, their systems are actually crashing, you know, because they're not used to it. And look at what the University of South Wales and Learner Limited have done. They've done this for over 10 years and they've made it seamless, you know. 
So yeah, for me, online learning does it because of that benefit. Fantastic. That's yeah. I think that's that. I think that is a testament to the robustness um, and the structure that online learning gives you. I know that you know if if I was you know at my traditional you know bricks and mortar physical university, if I was to say you know I. Because I'm a morning like yourself, hands on. And I think if I was to go up to them and go, I think we should have, you know, I think we should have lectures at 6 a.m. I'd be hunted down and killed by my course mates for suggesting such a such a wild thing, you know. Um, and I love the fact that with online learning, you've still got that support from the tutors, right? And and from the students supporting, but you can do that learning at any time. Um, and I think there's a there's a lot to be said said about that. So I wanted to ask you guys. You know, you're in different parts of the world, you're, you're, but you are doing all that learning is on your own. It's self-directed. So when it came to support, um, Hansel, I'm going to come back to you if that's okay. Um, what was, what, what was the, your experience with student support? How, how did you find that support and, and was there enough support for you? Wow. Um, you know, it was brilliant, overwhelming support. I can tell you, I have... I have a, 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 I was at a, a, an unfortunate situation when I was doing my master's where I was going through, you know, quite a few personal issues. Um, some of them work related to a point where I, I had to be put onto antidepressants because it, I was struggling to cope. Now you have to bear in mind that this is a master's one is doing and there is work that you, you need to, you know, you need to apply your mind. Um, and that on its own was getting me anxious because I was not able to apply my mind intellectually because of, you know, the other stresses in my life. And, uh, I was worried that I would not even be able to submit on time. It was a really, really challenging part, you know, uh, time of, of my life when I was doing my masters. But, um, I remember very clearly when I actually approached student support, um, I mean, I spoke to my tutor who referred me to student support and student support then um, told me of the appropriate channels that I could use. It was really, really overwhelming, like really good. Um, to so a point where I then did the formal application for an extension because I really couldn't cope at the time. And let me tell you something, the, the amount, the, the response that came back when they approved the extension of my master's, uh, I felt like I felt like they were right there, right there next to me, actually cheering me on. That was phenomenal. You know, it it was so good to me. It actually gave me the courage to just write and apply my mind and really don't think about the challenges that I'm facing. And I'm so glad that I did that. And I'm it actually made me so glad that I have joined University of South Wales and uh, Learner Limited. I am really really happy about it. Look at me today. I graduated. No, <laughs> <laughs> you certainly did. You certainly did. That's yeah. amazing. I think that's that's wonderful. That um, you know, obviously, it's really really tough to hear that you you know you've had some some mental health uh, issues, and I we've all been there. I've been there myself, um, and I know that even even studying at a, a sort of a bricks and mortar university, um, because of you know having to do that physical thing of go to the university get that support. I did, although I wouldn't talk down the, the support I had, I think it's fantastic. Um, to have that, you know, at the reach of your phone or of your computer, to have that support readily available, um, obviously made that difference, which is lovely. And I want to emphasize to some of the potential and, and uh, applicants um, today, that there is nothing that we can't help you with. There's nothing that student support can't support you with. There's no question that is silly. There's no question that is not necessary. Um, we are your best mates. You know, we are your best friends in online learning. And, and that's what I want to emphasize. The support is there for more than just, you know, your technological um, issues, which I think is really important. So as you talked about there about um, the support with the, from your student support, um, Dr. Rashid, I wanted to speak to you about, um, you know, you, you name dropped a lot of your tutors there, you know, even name dropped Steve, our, our founder director. Um, and, and general sort of mind behind the whole, the whole concept. I was talking to you, what, what was the relationship like with your tutors? You know, we heard about from the tutors in the last session, but what was it, from your perspective, what was it like having online tutors? Uh, fantastic. As you see it, uh, as I've said, that uh, the tutors and also the student supporting, they are doing great, they're fantastic team. 
they are much, much cooperative. They are working efficiently and cooperatively uh, to serving uh, all the students and to get the maximum benefits for the uh, help. And that is great, 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 uh, enormous uh, assistance. I, I cannot forget the special thanks to Emma and uh, her help. Uh, she's doing great at always doing, uh, assisting us as students and also uh, the tutors. Uh, we are very cooperative. Uh, they are sending us directly and they are doing uh, very uh, intellectual uh, communication with all the students and the rest of the students. Uh, so I, 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 I most I, I'm I'm really surprised and amazed with when when I communicate at the beginning with the student support team uh, to this uh, uh, they are providing great help and they are always present to us they are always available I strongly really really advise uh, people if they are going uh, to uh, apply for this uh, master degree. Uh, in the uh, university uh, to approach the student support team. They, they, will, they will find enormous help and great assistance. I think the student support team, they are doing uh, great. Uh, if you are with the student support team, you are in safe hand. And also the tutors, the tutors, they are doing great. Uh, uh, every time I approach uh, one of the tutors, Professor Mark Williams, uh, professors, uh, uh, Simon and all the doctors, they are doing great, great assistance. And uh, they are always there with updated information, as I remarked uh, in, the, in the beginning, I said before. And uh, I will, I will uh, let you know more about the respiratory medicine experience. It was very plentiful and useful experience with me. I got to know with the, an updated information regarding the asthma, how to diagnose, investigation, the management, the stepwise approach, and to get to know with the update information about the NICE guidelines, uh, the GINA, which is called, uh, and the, uh, uh, also here in Saudi, it's called SINA, like Saudi Initiative for uh, uh, Treating Asthma. Also the COPD, uh, gold standard and the gold guidelines, uh, how to approach the patients, the pharmacological therapy, and then a pharmacological therapy way of management, including smoking, smoking cessation, palliative, and the uh, exercise. All these things we get to know to the lung cancers, how we can screen the lung cancers, and the red flag symptoms, and the uh, staging of the lung cancer, how you can approach the patients with, with lung cancer, and the management of lung cancer and the ethics behind that, how to deal with patient with lung cancer, asbestos disease, occupational disease, occupational lung disease. As you see, the field of respiratory medicine is uh, huge uh, and there is a lot of information still uh, under research and, and until analysis. Uh, and every time, every time we are surprising by, by bacteria or new uh, virus or something like that in this uh, field, so uh, the respiratory medicine was very, very useful. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, getting information uh, even about the uh, venous thromboembolism uh, and the acute uh, respiratory cases like pulmonary embolism, uh, it is very, very enormous and huge experience and very useful. And uh, that's why... That's why uh, in all the modules, I, I think in the diploma first, there's six modules. And then after that, the master's degree, uh, the research and the, uh, the thesis uh, discussion. Uh, it was very useful, very useful experience uh, among the last uh, uh, two years. Uh, so uh, approaching tutors and a student support team and all the diploma MSc team, uh, is very, very uh, easy and thank you very much for uh, all this help and I am very glad to join you. I see, I see also Dr. Khidr is there. Uh, he is one of my mentors and my uh, uh, 
uh, Godfathers in Respiratory Medicine. A special thanks to Dr. Khidr Tayyib. Uh, he's a consultant pulmonologist who is uh, uh, carrying a, a great, great effort for uh, helping and treating all COVID-19 patients. Uh, and uh, I am one of his students uh, in the clinical MD of Respiratory Medicine. Uh, also, thank you for, for joining us, Dr. Khidr and Dr. Imad Salah and Dr. Abdelazid Bismillah. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, so, uh, it is very, very great. Uh, it is very great uh, uh, experience. And uh, uh, that's why I really, really did not regret that. And also, I'm continuing doing this acute critical medicine uh, to upgrade also my information on this side also. Uh, as you know that there is uh, overlapping between the cases. Uh, respiratory is not isolated from the heart, is not isolated from the uh, kidney. As you saw, you know, asthma patient can be with Church Strauss syndrome. And there is another th cases that it is uh, interlinked with other organs. So uh, it is very good and useful uh, to know more about respiratory medicine. And thank you very much uh, for this uh, joining uh, you today no problem that's fantastic fantastic to hear the fact that you know the, the courses itself um the guidance of the tutors has allowed you to um you know go into other fields of medicine i know the fact that you've now uh, been accepted and are, are, are going to head on to our acute medicine course right um which is incredibly exciting and and to see you know we talked earlier about a student we've had who's completed five courses um, so you're gonna have to do some catching up, Dr. Sheet. <laughs> but um, <laughs> he's got it. He's got it. Um, which is really exciting to have you back with us. So, with that, with that being said, um, I want to I want to come back to you, Hanson, about um, we've had a lot of questions today about the online learning resources. Um, we had we had Megan run through the online platform itself. With regards to technology and the online library. Um, what was it like using that online resource? What was it like um, using the using the online system to learn? Yeah, um, for me, I found it quite seamless. It's really, really easy to use. I had one of the great experiences at one time where I, I needed to actually get a journal online um, because you'd understand the distance. It's, it's Wales and I'm in South Africa. And uh, I was really struggling to locate the journal. And um, I remember very clearly there was a button there that actually allowed you to approach a 24-hour librarian. Clicked on that button and lo and behold, there was a li librarian right there to help me. You know, it was an online chat. And she did tell me that they're available 24 hours a day. Mind you, she was sitting in California and I'm in South Africa and she's actually searching for an online journal because I needed it. I, I felt the journal was so um, pertinent to my uh, master's thesis that I, I had to get it. And it happened to have been the weekend, by the way, on a Sunday, <laughs> you know? Um, and uh, it was, it only took her five minutes, something that I was struggling with for a bit of some time and I was anxious about it. It only took her five minutes to actually locate the journal and actually send the journal to me. Um, that's how easy it was. I mean, and besides that, um, when I was doing my, my postgraduate diploma, it was everything that I required was right there. You know, I could just go on to uh, find it and type in the keywords and I'd find every, any journal that I needed at the time. So in terms of uh, online library, wow. Yeah, it's, it's, it's really easy. It's really cool. And yeah. by the way, I even got to brag to one of my friends um, who was doing his master's with a local university because he was going through the same thing and he couldn't get help at all. You know? And I was like, well, you know what? My university that was so far away, I had the help you know, right there at my fingertips. Why couldn't your university that is right here, you can, you're you even attending the lectures, but now that you need online support, you're not getting it. You know, I was just bragging about it. It was really, really funny. <laughs> That's fantastic. I don't, you shouldn't be boasting about it, Stahata. honestly. You don't need to do that. <laughs> But no, that's, that's, a, that's a wonderful experience to hear. And um, again, 
it's it, our challenge and something that we try to improve on every single year is breaking down that distance barrier despite the fact that i mean to put it literally we're up here and you're down here <laughs> you know it's like despite that distance we're still able to to provide you well i say we you know the the fantastic university are able to supply you with that kind of support and and i i love that so much it was um yeah it's lovely to hear that so um, so Dr. I want to talk about, so we talked about the online learning system and, and thank you so much Hanson for such a comprehensive sort of, um, you know, uh, uh, experience on, on how that was. Um, you guys have both attended graduation. Um, graduation is a big event. It's, you know, like we said, even if people can't attend, we send the, the certificates to them, but you both had the, the joy of coming and, and therefore I had the joy of, of meeting you guys, which was lovely. Um, Dr. Rashid, could you sort of tell us what that graduation day was like and, and what it felt, how you felt on that day? Uh, I was, you know, uh, the, 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 I was surprised even with the organizing uh, team, the organizing committee, they are doing very nice uh, job. Uh, the graduation day was a very, very, very uh, happy day in my life. Uh, I was uh, 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 connecting with my family. Uh, they are seeing me from Sudan and from Saudi Arabia. Uh, uh, that uh, was uh, because they cannot uh, attend with me, but my lovely wife, uh, Jasmine, she was with me. and. Uh, it was a very lovely day. I was very happy to uh, attend the graduation day. It was uh, uh, very um, uh, and very very beautiful day. Uh, the pictures and the uh, organizing and the uh, uh, meeting the tutors and the professors and the dean of the university uh, of the South Wales and the. It was very nice. Uh, it was very nice, and I uh, have a good memory about uh, Cardiff and all the people there. They are very lovely. They are very lovely. They are, and they are very. Uh, um, I, I, I really this first time to 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 uh, attend uh, to Cardiff area, Cardiff city, and this very nice uh, people, uh, very welcoming, accommodating, and they are nice uh, in dealing with people from all over the country. Uh, uh, you know, I, I passed maybe around 12 hours uh, around uh, traveling, uh, first of all from Jeddah to London and then from London to uh, Cardiff. Uh, it was very long uh, travel, but it was very you know, nice uh, journey and uh, very nice uh, uh, place to come. Uh, thank you, uh, and I was very happy to meet you and meet uh, Megan and uh, Emma, Catherine, uh, uh, Lindsay. Uh, she was there also, and the uh, um, uh, most of the student support team was there. Uh, marketing area and the, all the people. Uh, it was very very nice uh, gathering. Uh, and uh, very memorizing uh, uh, moments to meet all my peers and uh, my uh, colleagues in the master's degree also, to meet them and to discuss with them how was the experience. So I really enjoyed that. I really enjoyed that. Thank you. No, my pleasure. It was, it was a fantastic day. And something you, you pointed on there is quite interesting is the fact that um, you know, you've done these group assignments with the people on your course, you know, you've, you've learned alongside them, you learned alongside your tutors. Um, Hansen, what was it, was it like to sort of, you know, finally meet these people behind, you know, behind the student support screens, behind, um, you know, your colleagues, the other people on the course, behind the tutors? What was it like to, to meet those people um, on that day? It was a beautiful experience, I must say. Um, having to, you know, for me, uh, the goal initially that I said for myself was that um, the moment um, I received my results, published some results for my master's, I would actually uh, go to Wales, you know, to Cardiff and graduate. And uh, so that's one of the reasons I didn't go to the graduation ceremony for my postgraduate diploma. Um, and uh, when I really did receive the results last year, 
um, that I'd actually passed my master's. I'd said it upon myself that, wow, I, I'll do, you know, go through uh, hell and high waters to get to Wales, you know. Uh, and when I got there that day, it was really a memorable occasion. I, I, I don't have words enough to describe it because even up till this day, I'm the celebrity of my local community, <laughs> you know. That here's this boy, <laughs> this young young lad who's traveled all the way to Wales to graduate. And my my pictures were shared throughout social media. I, I posted my graduation on LinkedIn, on Facebook. I had so many likes. Um, I got to meet um, such good colleagues, Catherine and and so many people from, you know, Learn Unlimited, the university itself. Um, yeah, um, it's such a memorable experience. Even up until now, I have all my, you know, my, both my qualifications are actually hung on the wall. And uh, one of the um, um, photos, my grad photo, is right here um, on the wall. And the other one is in the main house where my mom is able to see it. And uh, I'm known as this guy who read, who wore the red, what is this, the red robe. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you know what? Um, red robe is associated with PhD in my community, so you could understand the pressure that I'm under. <laughs> yeah, everybody that sees me, seriously, um, I I am really grateful for, for the experience. I do not ever regret having been uh, having been a part of you know um, diploma MSc and University of South Wales. I have all the memorabilia. Um, I am, like I said, I'm the celebrity of the area. <laughs> uh, it's opened so many opportunities for me. I, I got to tell people about it. I mean, I even talk about it till this day that, you know, I was in Wales. I met such wonderful people and they're like, wow. <laughs> yeah. So thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for coming. I think we, it's so overwhelming for us when we, um, I, I, I remember, Dr. Shiga, you said here that I, mean, I remember you turning up and, and I don't know, for some reason, you sort of get used to it that we, we, you know, we ask around and we meet some students that go from Ireland, you know, we're from Scotland, stuff like that. We go, oh, wow, you know, that's, that's really far. Because I, I think for us in our little, you know, our little island we call Britain, you know, it is quite far. And then to hear you guys coming from, I remember when Dr. Shiga, you told me how far you came to and you literally knew it in miles. Um, I was just, oh, I was overwhelmed. It was just... Yeah, that many. <laughs> Add some zeros. <laughs> uh, it was absolutely, oh, absolutely overwhelming. Um, it, and for us, it's lovely because it allows us to see the result of that work. Uh, we love the fact that we can offer online education, but it does get to us. And the fact that you know we can't see you, we can't, um, you know, we can't, you know, shake your hands and 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 you know, obviously not now with the pandemic, but you know, to, to be there around you and and that's something we. We absolutely love. So um, thank you so much. We had someone say hello, alumna, by the way. Someone said hello. Um, so we're getting, through, we're getting through to the last quarter and um, I was really sad about this. Time has gone way too fast. Um, so I want to, uh, I've got two more questions for you guys each. Um, I wanted to start with, the last one's going to be just like a short one. So this one I wanted to ask, um, so what, we've talked about, you know, why you chose the course. We've talked about before. We talked about um, the course itself. You guys really enjoyed the flexibility, the fact it was online. You know, had some, you could do your studying at 4 a.m., crazy. You know, you can do whatever you like with these online courses. We talked about graduation. I want to talk about the future now. Um, so you've got this MSc, you know, handsome. You're the celebrity of your, of your local community. Um, so I wanted to ask you guys, and I'll start with you, Dr. Rashid, you know, what is in, you've got your master's, what's in the future for you now? What, what do you hope to achieve, um, you know, with your experience and, and with the, the MSc? Uh, okay, I, I, or to answer this, as I said, uh, the course was very flexible, uh, organized, uh, systematic and uh, it uh, allow you the chance to upgrade your information upgrading your knowledge and uh, this is uh, the, the, the this is the key this is the key is to uh, update your information so uh, i really like that as you know that the knowledge is like ocean uh, whatever you take from that ocean you will not get enough so every time you are uh, thirsty to learn more and more and more uh, 
my future plan is to finish and fulfill my clinical MD in respiratory medicine, beside also the master's degree in acute medicine. And also, uh, it uh, opened many job opportunities for us, and this gives us the chance to participate more in our local community with the, uh, as you see now, the COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, it was very useful for us to join uh, the, 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 the local community participation in the health system. Um, and uh, I, I, I wish that uh, the health system in Sudan become more uh, competent and, uh, and improved uh, in caring our COVID-19 patients, as we are lacking some uh, uh, materials and logistics. And, uh, but I hope so that it will end soon. And uh, uh, I think this step uh, is upgrading our my, my, my clinical experience, my clinical knowledge. Uh, and uh, I was uh, participating also in the COVID-19 uh, pandemic uh, still until now. And even uh, we are uh, facing the uh, cases and it was very critical and uh, but luckily that most of them, they are alive and they are well and they are recovered now. Um, definitely, definitely. A more, uh, more, more uh, uh, happiness to, to continue learning. Um, I will not uh, stop here. Uh, the learning process is a continuous process. Uh, if we stop that we are, if, if you stop, we are history. So we need to continue. Uh, as uh, our friend Hansam said that there's a journal in California and he uh, got that update information from the there. So uh, getting access to the library in the University of South Wales and the library that's available online uh, with the huge data that's available in that library, fantastic. Uh, and. Uh, so, so, so my future plan, as I said to you, that is to finish and uh, finish um, and fulfill my clinical MD and also uh, the acute medicine master degree. And uh, I'm always uh, keen and uh, to continue to continue this uh, learning process. I will not stop uh, until uh, uh, the breath is going out from my soul. So I will not stop at all. And uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Ruti. I think, I think that, that's so inspiring, especially here. I think in the UK, I think we have this, um, we have a bit of an issue, especially in sort of the business world, where, you know, we'll go to school, we'll do our college, go to university, and then it's sort of like, right, you know, you get your job. You know, you're at your desk, and then you just sort of stay there and, and keep performing the function, when actually, to, to, have, to feel pure joy, to feel fulfillment in life, the learning process has yes. to continue. It has to, it has to continue to happen. Um, and, and that discovery, that sense of discovery, um, has to keep, keep happening, which is really interesting. And we've had a, a question from uh, one of our attendees, which I'm going to come to you, Hanson, with. Um, they said, uh, has the MSC opened new doors, uh, created new opportunities, and, and met the purpose for which you went for the program? So did it meet your expectations? So, um, yeah, so Hansen, what do you, what do you think? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Now, when I initially enrolled for first the postgraduate diploma and subsequently the MSC, my main goal was to become an influencer in the world or in the field of diabetology, not just in, you know, within my community, but, you know, in the country and also the, looking at the world in general. And uh, lo and behold, I'm now a holder of an MSc in diabetes. It has actually put me at the forefront of becoming an influencer. Um, just about the other day, I got a doctor who wanted me to run a clinic on his behalf, managing all his um, patients who are uh, diabetic. Now, this is profound, especially considering that um, at this stage in South Africa, we have one of the highest or the rapidly growing number of diabetics in, in the world. And uh, the worst to that is that in my province, which is KZN, and subsequently my region, which is Durban, there are a lot of undiagnosed patients who are diabetic. 
this very doctor that who has approached me has been actually um, uh, signed by the government, the national government, into running a program called the NHI. So we are in this process of revising our healthcare system in the country. And we are implementing a system that is closely related to that of the UK, which is the NHS. So in South Africa, it's actually going to be called the NHI. And he's going to be one of the forefront runners of that program. And uh, he's actually approached me to run his clinic um, in, con in conjunction or in connection with that program. So how profound is that? You know? And that is just one door that is open. That is just one. I have many other uh, examples. One of the examples that I have, another doctor who's actually approached me with the same in mind, but she wants to actually run a project um, that is in collaboration with the International Diabetes Federation. So how, how, how good that is that? Um, I've been invited to uh, conferences that unfortunately were canceled due to COVID-19, but uh, a confer conferences in Egypt looking at guidelines um, that, is, that are in the Arabian Peninsula um, of you know, uh, diabetes treatment and therapy and how that can be uh, influenced in, in Africa and also to the rest of the world. So there's plenty of opportunities that have, that have sprung up because I've done this, um, this uh, program. The other thing that I want to say is uh, um, in my country, when you actually study diabetes in South Wales, you are deemed as an, a major asset because not many people actually um, enroll to or have this qualification in diabetes, especially considering that what I've said about, you know, the diabetes being a scourge in the country and taking into account that there are not many healthcare professionals who are clued up with the programs for diabetes management and therapy. And that is understandable. There's so much to be learned and known about medicine. Um, we need more people to actually focus on diabetes itself. What had happened in the country was that uh, the government concentrated a lot on HIV prevention and management as well as TB because it was presenting as a scourge, understandably so. Uh, but uh, the drawback was that they actually left the elephant in the room that was grooming to becoming this major giant. And once they had diabetes and H I mean, HIV and uh, uh, TB under control, they then realized, that, oh my goodness, we have diabetes that we've been neglecting. And they found, us some, they, they found themselves scrambling trying to find solutions. So I'm right at the forefront to say, hey, here I am and I'm doing it. I've approached um, the uh, district uh, healthcare sector, uh, government itself. So they are really keen on having me on board. Um, look at me and COVID-19 um, and the fact that I'm doing a PhD looking into diabetes and respiratory biomarkers. Um, for COVID-19 patients who are diabetic. So all of those, um, the doors that have opened for me are beyond what I could have comprehended or could have be, I could have imagined, you know, yeah. <laughs> so thank you. Oh, don't, don't thank me. Again, this is, uh, you know, we, we provide these courses and I say that, you know, I'm just a tiny cog in, in what happens, but it's the knowledge. And like you said, Dr. Rashid, it's, it's that continuous discovery and learning process that you guys contribute is what makes these courses what they are. Um, like hugely in, especially in the, um, you know, in the group assignments that you have, you guys are coming from different countries with different issues. Like you said, you know, diabetes is, is really rife there in, in South Africa and, and you're at the forefront of controlling that. Um, which is kind of, it sort of wells me up a little bit because it means that, you know, in, in future, when those diabetes cases go down, you're going to be one of the names that people talk about when those numbers go down. I mean, that, I mean, that's everything, isn't it? I mean, that's huge. To, to, I heard a wonderful expression the other week. Um, someone said, uh, I, I, uh, it was a friend of mine, and I said, um, what is working about, you know, having one of these philosophical chats, what is work? Why do we work? Why don't we just enjoy the sunshine, you know, and, um, and, and hang out? And uh, they said, we work so that we leave a part of ourselves on this earth. And for me, I was like, that's it. You know, if you can do something where you're effectively leaving behind a legacy, leaving behind a positive impact um, on the world. Um, I think that means a lot. And I think one of our guests summed it up. They said, uh, that's great and, and so inspiring. Uh, I couldn't agree with them more. So we have five minutes left of your very, very valuable time, uh, the both of you. So I was hoping if, if you guys could sum up in maybe just two minutes uh, each, I'll come to you, Dr. Rashid, first. Um, 
say I'm a student, you know, or one of the attendees today is is a little bit nervous about joining, uh, a little bit nervous about the course. What would you say? Definitely, 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 you will not regret joining uh, uh, Diploma MSc University of South Wales, and uh, definitely you will upgrade your information and clinical knowledge. And uh, this will enhance uh, your uh, performance in your uh, daily life. And uh, uh, as uh, our colleague Hansam said, that you will be uh, unique in your local community. So uh, this chance is very good. Uh, I urge and recommend all, all the people who are listening to us or watching us from all over the world is to take a further step in learning. Uh, the studying is very important and the powerful of knowledge uh, is powerful in life. So I really recommend everyone to join. I think there's more than 20, 20 courses, endocrine, diabetes, as my colleague, uh, he went to diabetes, uh, respiratory, nephrology, gastro, geriatric, uh, rheumatology, sport medicine uh, also a lot of things a lot of things uh, health economy health management i think this uh, very good chance and very good uh, choice to 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 join and to upgrade the information and uh, this learning experience you will not regret at all uh, and most of most uh, of the people who went through this experience, they want to do it again and again and again, such like me right now. So you will not regret, not regret. Thank you. So sorry to cut you there, Dr. Rashid. Uh, absolutely, um, you've just summed it up. You, uh, whoever wants to join um, for the prospective students, you definitely will not regret it. Um, if I had the chance to do it again, I would, uh, but I mean, I already have my master's. I got my postgraduate diploma, so <laughs> uh, I'm okay. I, I I actually missed the online learning platform. Um, it has been an experience that has been great. It's been beautiful. I'm really grateful for for having had the opportunity. And uh, if you look at it, this is the next best thing that has had to happen in in the world of technology. You know, the next uh, fourth industrial revolution is all about digitization, and this is this is it. So, well done to the University of South Wales. Well done to Learner Limited. Well done to all of you guys for such a great uh, initiative of digitizing online. Um, I mean, learning to becoming online. And um, thank you for having given us the opportunity. And I wish all the students who are going prospective students. I wish them all the best. They will definitely not regret it most certainly I mean, I, I, I can put my head up on the block or upon the rail tracks <laughs> for that because <laughs> that's how much faith I have in you um, you they will definitely not regret it it's going to be a beautiful learning experience for all of you so thank you so much <laughs> fantastic thank you so much guys and honestly if we had the time um, I'd be here for an extra hour chat with you guys but I know you guys have got um, you know, responsibilities you've got to go back to. Um, I've got to have lunch. I'm starving. Um, so the, this is, it's, it's been an absolute pleasure to speak with you, um, to speak with the tutors. You know, we, we're so busy here, you know, making sure that we make, particularly the marketing department, making these courses available and, and trying to spread, you know, your message because we can do all we like. You know, we can say it's online. You know, you can get this job. You can get this call. But to hear it from you guys is, um, is a unique opportunity for not only us, but for, you know, the, the people who are considering these courses. So um, you guys have inspired me. Um, you are, you guys are the prime example of the kind of people that I think to when I need hope, when I, when I want to work harder, when I want to strive for more. Um, you know, I, I can see us start to say things like, what would Dr. Rashid do? You know, what would Hanson do? Um, I think we'll, we'll stick that on the wall of, uh, of the office when we get back. But, um, you know, especially in such a time with the, with the pandemic um, running rife, I want to say that, uh, you guys are our inspiration. You are heroes. Um, you're the guys who who put your neck on the line um, or your your neck on the on the rail, like you said, Hanson. And uh, mm -hmm. you know, you guys are truly um, brilliant. 
But, you know, that's all I can say. So thank you so much for your time. Um, oh, Dr. Rashid, did you want to add something there, sorry? Yeah, just finally, just the message for all to uh, prevent yourself from this COVID-19 pandemic. Don't forget to wash your hands frequently, uh, wear the face mask, uh, practice the social distance, uh, but not to be socially distant from the, your families and from the friends. And uh, it's important to uh, be restricted to in your movements and in approaching all the surroundings. So please uh, don't forget, clean your hands frequently, wear the face mask, practice the social distancing until we got uh, the final uh, solution for this uh, pandemic. Wish you all safe and good health. Thank you very much and thank you for the panelists and the attendees who are watching us and from all the world. Thank you very much. I really enjoyed uh, joining you today. Thank you very much. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Dr. Rich. Really appreciate it. And um, thank you so much, Hudson, for, for joining us as well um, for, from again so far away and from the rain. Um, it's, it's absolutely wonderful um, that, to have you with us. And like I said, this hopefully will be the first of many um, online open days, and I'm, I'm sure we will um, continue. So uh, thank you guys so much. Bye bye. Thank, thank you. Thank you so much. Bye bye. Have a good day. Here we go. That's it. Thank you so much. I can see a lot of names with us um, who have been with us from the start today. Um, four hours is a long time to do anything, um, you know, let alone make, make these big decisions. I really hope this has helped. Um, if you do have any feedback or anything you'd like to say, we are on Twitter at diploma-msc. Um, we're on Facebook, we're on Instagram, so do um, share, share on there and let us know um, what you thought. I want to thank my colleagues who have been running around in the background um, making this happen whilst I've been just sort of flouncing around on here, I'm trying to do the best I can. Um, but if you are interested in a course, if you're not an applicant already, you can apply and, and look at over our uh, over 21 courses on www.diploma-msc.com. Do that, no problem at all. If you do have questions that haven't been answered, they can be, I can't stress enough, we will answer every single one of your questions. Do send them over to our admissions department and we would love to help or equally ask us on social media and we will help. Thank you so much for attending. Take care, look after yourselves and um, keep being brilliant. Okay, bye-bye. Thank you very much.